in honor of Toby Keith, he's going to talk about himself. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church but get a mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. We have comedians on today. Both have great specials. Eric D'Alessandro is here. He's a comedian. He's an actor. He's young and he's funny. He's got a stand-up special called I Don't Understand. It's available on YouTube. I watched it in its entirety yesterday and it's very funny, so I recommend it. Highly good to see you, Eric. Yeah, man, great to see you. Thank you so much for watching it. You, really, I've never, people don't normally <laughs> even, you know, oh, yeah, I saw something. So that's really awesome that you want yeah, to Yeah, they you. normally don't. And I, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm as guilty. I'm in the middle. Most, there's, there's a lot of people you talk to and they're like, I don't know what's the name of this thing and who yeah. are you and all this. Like, you got to do a little prep. Yeah, for sure. You would think. Um, I got a lot of uh, thoughts, and I uh, hope oh you can uh, join in on, on all those uh, thoughts. Yeah, please. Um, I realize, I feel, I don't know what your drink is. Okay. Uh, um, I, I got into old fashions. Old fashions. Yeah. Old fashions. Okay. Straightforward. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good glass. Great glass. It's, you Big know why? Because it's a straight up walled glass. From yeah. the bottom to the top, same same way. Same with it's a Same rocks, way. rocks glass, yeah. Yeah. And so what I so I had a situation and uh, you didn't tell me what you what you think about this. Um, I started ordering martinis. Ooh, okay. And but I started realizing that the glasses were all different shapes. They mm. have a kind of old school classic martini. It looks like a almost like a champagne, like a low champagne glass from the fifties or the sixties. A coupe. Yeah. Yeah. So they call those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is your dad a bartender? (laughs) (laughs) No, it's funny because I'm not. I I I never drank. uh, And then when I first moved, I lived in L.A. for three years. When I first uh, came out here to try and like make it or whatever. And my wife and I, my now wife, my then girlfriend, we got jobs at a bartending school to try and make money. This then you're the perfect. I'm so glad you're here today. (laughs) We had to learn about this stuff. And then I I never drink. I was not a drinker. I'm like a I'm like a six year old. I just like Pepsi. And then when I I went out for uh, someone's birthday like a year or two ago, and I was like, I'm I'm in my 30s. I can't be getting what what I used to get when I was 21. You can't drink a (laughs) YooHoo at an adult party or 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 like a or like a Stoli Vanilla and Sprite. I'm like I'm like a frat girl. So I just uh, my, my my a lot of my friends back home they're like big drinkers they like they they gave me like a suggestion of get get bullet bourbon in an old fashioned and I loved it. Mm-hmm. Now I get them everywhere I go. I love to see like a I'll get like a honey uh, 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 like a, a maple old fashioned or stuff like that. But yes, so now and we I got into like the craft of of, of drink making. So, so I we, hope I know enough. We need <laughs> some regulatory body to okay. sanction martinis because there's the coupe glass that uh-huh. you spoke of, which also looks like old timey, like on the Titanic when they would pour champagne. Like that the great Gatsby. Leonardo well, you know, yes. DiCaprio meme when he's like, right. Right. that's yeah, exactly yeah. right. That's yeah. a coupe glass, right? Yep. Then they have the ones that just taper up. The your triangle. Your art, the triangle martini glass. But those come in like a big and a medium. Mm-hmm. They're smaller versions Ooh, of them, okay. right? And then... There's many ways. If you go to the right steakhouse, they leave the shaker with you. There's a couple oh, really? of places, a couple of places where they will leave the shaker with you. Those which, are like the the classic places. Yes, I which which wow. which I enjoy. And then there's another version of this that I I never rarely seen, but but I'll get to it. So I first we need a rule. The rule is you got to fill the martini glass to the top. When you're making it, if you're bringing it over to the table and a little spills, that's fine. But mm. go to the top because the classic martini, if you stop a half inch from the top, mm. that is actually more booze than what's beneath it because it tapers how so hard. It is, yeah. yeah, because the bottom inch of it goes down to zero and then it comes up. And if you stop, 61% of it is the top half inch. But yeah, okay. That's a good point. So this happens to me. I go out to dinner with a friend and we, we like to order martinis. And he orders my. When the first order we order at the bar, the guy makes two of them. But when he dumps it in, 
there's clearly one and a half were the <laughs> martinis, and they stopped far from the top of each. I don't like each. when they put two drinks in one, I, in one thing, too. Do twice the labor. I'm paying twice as much. Or, you know, get a heavy hand going <laughs> and have a little for yourself. Or I'll take a fucking sip. You can pour the rest of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. How about that? I'll just lay down on the bar. <laughs> so he comes up short, and you just kind of stand there for a minute, and you're like, okay. By the way, these things are 21 bucks a piece, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I go back to the table and some finish those off in nine minutes because there's nothing in them. It's the narrow bottom part that's left. So he orders another another round. Same thing. Comes up, comes up short. End up over the course of the night, three martinis, zero buzz. Like mm. it just there wasn't enough in, in any of them. Zero, but martinis are like straight booze. They're straight booze. Yeah. They come up short. So the comedy is is the following night. I got another dinner thing going on, and I'm at this smokehouse in Toluca Lake, old school, old school. And I'm sitting there, and I go, I'm going to order a martini. If this motherfucker doesn't fill this thing up, they I'm going right to say house. something. And I have my back to the waiter. I'm sitting on the end of the table, and the guy comes up, and he drops a martini off, and it is half full. And I swing around because I got like a head of steam now, you know, and I go, hey, man, you got it. And as I'm yelling, hey, man, he sets down a glass plate with ice in it and the little jigger of the the little carafe of the rest of the martini. And I was like, hey, man. You're doing a beautiful job. <laughs> yeah. How's the family? How's the family? So I realize, but I don't know because everyone's got right. their own. Some leave the full shaker. Some leave the mini carafe. Some just come up short. Some have yeah. the glass. Some come to the top. We need a sanctioning body. The, there, we have to know. The, that should be the way to do it. Now, martinis, especially in that classic V-shaped top with the long stem, they are notoriously the hardest drink to transport because there's yes. no ice. If you have them on a tray, yes, they're going to yeah. spill all over yep. the tray. Just it, it, It's just going all over the place. So filling it only halfway, you're going to reduce spillage. Right. And then you get the chilled rest of the martini. Yes. Um, do some places yourself. just pour it? The whole thing at the table. Some do. You do that too. That's, yeah, that's, that's a nice. Yeah. Way to do. Uh, whatever it is, we need to agree on it. We need yeah. a sanctioning body. And a guy we, almost got his head ripped off. We need to know. Yeah. I mean, I I was sitting there going, if this motherfucker <laughs> tries to give me half a goddamn martini, I swear <laughs> to fucking god, no. Nope. And I I had a head of steam when I right. turned around. I mean, you you say this about food. Don't mess with food. Do let's get a uni- unified way to serve martinis. Right. So now. Yeah. Now, the next one. Now we get into beer. Now, this is tricky. Uh, so then the following weekend, I'm in Naples, Florida. and uh, Talk about old school. Yeah, hanging out, <laughs> meet a friend from high school. We're hanging out at the bar at the Ritz-Carlton. And uh, I go, uh, what do you got on tap? And they go, I got this local IPA. You say local IPA. I'm in. That's enough. I would okay. just say local in front of Budweiser if I were <laughs> these guys. We got a local Budweiser. Yeah. We got a local course, and I just go fine. I'm in because you said the word local. Yeah. yeah. So, local um, so the chick is trying to pour it in the in a kind of traditional beer glass. It, it's tapered, but it's not like a pint glass. It's it, but it but it tapers down. Hmm. And she's trying to pour it, and she keeps getting this head on it. Right now, you guys know bartending, so you should be able to. And my thing is, hey, bitch, just keep going until the head blows off and Mm -hmm. goes down the drain. She drops it off on the table. It's an inch and a half of head and then three inches of beer, like, beneath it. And I'm like, hey, we're at a Ritz. This is a local IPA. This is 14, 18 bucks. And this glass is 61% (laughs) filled. So I sit there and I look at it. And she heads out onto the patio to take care of people. And my friend is just drinking his beer. And I'm looking at it, and I won't touch it because I'm, tell- I'm going to tell her to top it off. Yeah. And, but if I sip it, then I busted the hymen on the top off. Yep. And if, you that- have, if you have foam in your mustache. <laughs> That's right. Got foam. Your, friend, uh, your friends was the same thing? Friends was the same thing, but I'm paying. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's driving back to his house in Naples. Yeah. I got. I, I'm just looking to catch a buzz and take a nap. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and then also I got a head of steam from the martini debacle <laughs> from earlier in the week. You know. So 
she, after 20 minutes of me just staring at the beer, she comes back. And then I go, hey, can you top this off? Because, again, the top inch and a half probably equals the four inches below it because the shit tapers down. And she's good looking and she has she's like Russian or something and we're at a Ritz. So you can't, you know, make a scene. <laughs> But she goes, yes, we just tapped the keg, and so that's what the keg's oh, doing. And I, a- I go, well, but don't you just, can't you just keep pouring until the suds go over the top? Can you do, you went, you ran yeah. a bartending school. I, I I took about two weeks of classes. I did one one bar, uh, one party in, in Burbank for the uh, Kentucky Derby. I made like a thousand mint juleps, and then we did one other party, <laughs> then I never did it again. So I, I don't really know much, but the glasses, I'm... But you would keep yeah. going you keep, until yeah, that's, the that's head a fresh. That's a fresh keg that yeah, the you're head to, will the go move away. Is you pour until the head just falls along the glass, and then you take a little bottle of water, you squirt it on the glass to clean, uh, clean it off. All right, but you can it. move the golden beer past the yeah, white head. Absolutely. Right. So then, <laughs> she doesn't want to spill it. I go, can you fill this up? It's not full, you know. And she goes, yeah, yeah. And then she goes back, and she gets it about a quarter inch higher. There's still about a half inch. There's an inch of head on it, and she hands it back to me. And I'm like, now what? Do do, do I send her back for a second or third time? Do I say anything? Do I sort of dovetail into, speaking of head, (laughs) you know, there is a way to take the edge off this experience. (laughs) It doesn't, I I think it sucks so much, but everybody's afraid of like being like called a Karen these days. Right. Even if you have a valid complaint, you feel guilty. Like we used to, my wife and I would go to Dunkin' all the time in Burbank when they opened up a Dunkin' Donuts and they just, I started to like coffee and every time we got it, it was completely different. And I'm like, I asked them to remake it once. I can't go back in there again. Right. And for somehow I'm the asshole who's just asking, hey, you you did this wrong. And then they rolled their eyes as if you're the problem. Yeah. But, and that's just a weird thing in society that we, I don't know, if, I don't know what the answer is because like people just don't want to be told that they did something wrong. And like they can probably complain. This this guy's complaining about his beer, but she did the wrong thing. I, I don't I don't know why that that's I, I think I have a, a fix. Taboo. I have a fix for all this. We need to invert the glass shape. We need to go pyramid glass. We need to be wider at the bottom than we are at the top. Because now if you come up short at the top, I'm not missing anything. The way we have it now is they all slope down, and that top is very valuable yeah. real estate. Even this right here is a slight, you know, it's yeah, wider it's at the top. Yeah, I yeah. would really like to know, like, and, and I've been thinking a lot about it, as you can probably tell. <laughs> but if you just take your average martini glass and you come up five-eighths of an inch short from the top, which I've had a lot, I'll bet you that's half of the glass because of the way it's That can slopes. be measured, sure. Dawson, get to work on the internet. See if we can uh, figure figure this uh, this one out. So, uh, Eric, we'll talk about you now. <laughs> uh, that, okay, sure. Um, stand up. How yeah. long have you been doing it? Uh, full-time, my, my, my full-time job for five years. And what was the plan? Like, when you were in high school, what were the thoughts? Yeah, so... My my problem was like I I tried to do too many things like I really wanted I wanted to make music I wanted to act I wanted to to direct I wanted to edit I wanted to do stand up I wanted to do a, a lot of things I, I wanted to be a wrestler for a while I was just a, a big dreamer as a kid and I got I got some following from where I'm from in Staten Island from like YouTube videos that I made got a, I got a manager nothing really came from from that and nothing came to fruition kind of was just kind of searching, putting out stuff on the internet. And this is like kind of strange too because you saw the potential of YouTube, Mm -hmm. but I was still old enough to like think this is like not real. You know, Mm -hmm. it was like, oh, I want to be Jim Carrey. I want to be Adam Sandler. You know, uh, this YouTube stuff is not going to get me there. Now it's the complete opposite. But so uh, I just kind of tried a lot for like a decade. And then in 2018, I came out here. I, I, I moved out here. And then I started to, uh, the big thing was I was not allowed at like the comedy store. Like you have to get past there. It's very political. It's very clicky. And so I I went to the potluck on Mondays to try and get selected. And I just never got selected. And I realized like, all right, I can either get selected once every four months, do a minute in front of other comedians just wanting to go on stage, Mm -hmm. or I could write out bits and put them on Instagram. 
So uh-huh. I just I wrote out my bits and then I just said them to my phone, which you know like complaining about the head at a restaurant of a beer. That would be one video where I went off for you know set up. Punch yeah, that's stuff. my shit, Carlos Mencia. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Uh, I get what you're saying. I was giving kid. you an example. <laughs> I heard you. So like I I just I just went crazy in 2018. I just I I put three out a week. Started building more following and and then uh, was like I think I could, I think I could probably get like a, a 45 minutes out of this all all of this material. I started calling places that, uh, on Staten Island where I'm from and uh, someone I knew who had a restaurant. He was like I don't know if we could do this. He didn't really care. Mm-hmm. An- another kid that I went to college with. We were trying to make something happen at my old college, and then I. Uh, my, my friend was having a 30th birthday party at this restaurant and the guy was like, we're trying to have comedy nights here. And he said, my friend Eric does comedy. He goes, I know that kid from his videos, put some tickets on sale and I, they sold out and then I, it just kept building from there. Really. Organic. Yeah, very very organically. Um, and then I just like was like, I haven't done an open mic in years and now I have to do 45 minutes. How's this going to go? <laughs> so I basically just wrote it and then perfected it over the next couple of years and that's basically the special. Uh, well, it's very funny. Thank you so much. And uh, it's full length. Um, it's an hour. I think an hour and yeah. seven minutes. Yeah, well, that's full by today's uh, standards. Oh, no, definitely. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. A lot of 37-minute specials coming out these days. <laughs> really? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how I, I always thought it should be. Like, when I watched them, when I watched Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle when I was a kid, it was they were always usually an hour. How how have you noticed, like, social media videos, YouTube, TikTok? How, how has it evolved over the last few years? Because you kind of got into it. Yeah, definitely. Really. I got in at a really good spot. So, like, I saw – I was, like, a local known YouTube guy, but not, nothing, like, to, to brag about at all. Um, and then Instagram got videos in, like, 2014, I think. And then they just, like – it took people a couple years to kind of catch. And then I think in 2018 it was just perfect timing. When I started posting a lot, that's when Instagram really was pushing video content. And it was just a perfect storm for me. Uh, I, I was ahead of the curve. Not not a lot of people were really doing that. Comedians definitely weren't. They were not posting clips. Now and it's I, all they do. I, now it's all they do. But like I've o- I've also noticed that like for me specifically, because I because I do want to write, I do want to act, I do like I have a cartoon that I made that I wanted to I just, I just put on YouTube and, and I, I have a lot of stuff I want to do, so I've noticed that like I'm, a lot of my followers don't really even see me as a stand-up because I love doing other stuff that, like, I'll do parodies of songs. I'll do a, a rap a, a remix of, like, I did, like, Christmas versus Thanksgiving at a battle rap. Like, things like that and, like, things that my wife and I will do, making fun of girls, going to TJ Maxx or whatever stuff. Kind of like my mini little SNL Dave Chappelle show skits. And I've noticed that, like, that's more impactful in my experience than, uh, than stand-up. Because being into stand-up... It's almost like being into college sports or something. Like the mainstream people will know you if you're Travis Kelsey, but they don't know, you know, where where he went to college or whatever. But like really, football heads know all that stuff. They know the the whole uh, offensive line and and all that stuff. But like I don't, I don't follow football that closely. But I know the stars. You'll know Kevin Hart. You'll know Jerry Seinfeld. But you don't know a someone like uh, Adam Ray, who's fantastic. I saw him last night. Like you might have to know about stand up to know who he is and to know uh, about people like him and, 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 or Ismo, I was just, he was on a show with me last night too. And uh, like, uh, so in order to get people interested in you, I feel like you need to have something outside of standup because we all, whether we know it or not, or want to admit it, we all got introduced to these people, not through standup. Like, you, you know, Jerry Seinfeld through his show, mm. you know, uh, Martin Lawrence through his show, you know, um, Whoever Eddie Murphy through his movie, maybe yes, I wasn't alive when Raw and stuff came out, but you know uh, SNL and and Beverly Hills Cop and and uh, I think that if there's a way to like sneak stand up in the back door, sort of like you uh-huh. know like I, I feel like uh, especially like let's say like a like a 30 year old girl, she's not necessarily looking for new stand ups, but my my video will hit her for you page. Oh, this guy's funny. Check out my stuff. Oh, he's really funny. G- grab her husband, come to a show, and they have a good time. That's kind of like my mentality, mm. sort of. But I am putting more on, st- on on my socials now, especially because with the special. Um, Dawson had brought something to my attention when we were walking in, which is um, a big problem, which I was talking to Zuby with yesterday, which is the safety-oriented society we're now living in. Is It has a downside. And... 
<clears throat> what I mean is, is like everyone goes safety, safety first, be safe out there and all that. And you guy, you go, well, I can't really find <laughs> fault with someone saying have a safe flight. Yeah. Although I'm not sure w- w- what role I play. Yeah. I guess I could not jump up and try to pull the latch on yes. a door once we're at altitude. But other than that, I'm I'm kind of along for the ride. Yeah. But uh, it would be like telling a piece of luggage, have a safe flight. Like, okay, <laughs> thank you, but I'll just be here. Yeah, you know? exactly. But, you know, but safety, safety, safety. And then people go, well, what's wrong with that? Well, like what's wrong with that is like when something like COVID comes around and then we're safety, 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 then out here we close all the schools. And then you go, oh, that has a downside. And then they go, yeah, but safety. So yeah. just safety is um, is fine, except where we have to weigh it against whatever else it's creating. So sure. well, let's play it safe and let's shut down schools for a year and a half. Well, that's fine, but there's going to be some fentanyl ODs and some kids are going to get depressed and commit suicide and then things that fall behind in math and reading. All right. So there's that part. And so I've always railed against safety. Like when we were trying, and I've said this 20 something years ago when we were trying to, there was talking about outlawing tackle football out here and i I would always say listen um a broken finger or elbow or whatever that that will heal but being a pussy is a lifetime sentence Mm. and i need to turn these fucking little guys into little men and yes they will get injured along the way but then you will have guys with character but dawson saw on facebook because it's been raining and by the way all it's, it's been, been doing is raining out here. That's it. Everything else, there's no difference in this society. I made it from Malibu out here in under the normal amount of time Traffic it takes better. me to care. Traffic got better. <laughs> I've never seen it rain this much. Everything this got crazy. better. Yeah. All the homeless guys starting fires on the side of the freeway, all <laughs> extinguished. I saw one on the way. <laughs> they the, got jobs. They're valeting cars uh, now. Yes. <laughs> they, they cleaned up their life. <laughs> yes. It's, it's not hurting anything, but everyone keeps... The news keeps talking about the storm fronts and the weather Flying. phenomenon. I, I had a friend text me yesterday, like, hey, it looks like it's the uh, apocalypse out there. He's, he lives in Nashville, right? Right. And he's seeing all the people posting their videos of what, like, of the rain and all the flooding. I said, yes. it's more of a drainage <laughs> issue than it, it is a rain it's issue. It's just rain. It's, it's it. I've been just going about my business. So is everyone here. But uh, Dawson... What was on Facebook? I saw that on safe, safe Facebook you were um, encouraged to mark yourself safe from the storm. Oh, wow, really? So that people will know that you're safe. That you haven't floated so, into the bay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this funny. this feature was introduced like for actual floods or tsunamis or tornadoes, like when real damage has been done to your mm-hmm. town and you want to tell your family that you're safe. That's what it's meant for. But yeah, they use it for the uh, heavy rain. Here. By the way, like my dad's on Facebook checking my status. You're refreshing <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Anybody who old. cares if you're safe probably would text you or. or yeah, I you, agree. Yeah. 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 My and, sister was on that ferry that crashed. Remember the Staten Island ferry? It crashed like into like the th- a bunch of people died and stuff. Like uh, my, I remember my friend called my house to see if he was okay. Like, uh, and anybody else who would care, I think would would call you. It wouldn't be like, right. oh, thank God, Adam's all right. I was worried about Check it. Your face. You got to be careful of that story because when you, you know, from the neck of the woods you're at, when you go, my sister was on that ferry, like which gay guy are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> you know Mark, right? <laughs> I was actually the Staten Island ferry for Halloween once. <laughs> I was a wing, you know. But your sister was okay. Yeah, she's fine. Wow. Yeah, I saw her Facebook. She's good. Yeah, we yeah, checked, she checked we saw the box. Yeah. This is before then, actually. Look, well, there's actually this study uh, that came out that says that people who tend to view stressful situations as a threat mm-hmm. are more likely to experience health and well-being problems, what? both mental and physical, than those who see stressful situations as a challenge, mm. right? So I mean, yes. this kind of just speaks to what you're saying. It's just- That's the flight or flight uh, response. You, you, you cannot scare people and expect them to have normal, fruitful, productive lives. You just can't like anybody that's ever adopted a dog that was beaten or traumatized or something like that and like every time the front door closes the dog goes you know just bounds away and hides under a table or something like that dog is fucked up if you traumatize people uh that's a that's a lifetime sense they just take it into they take they take it to the grave 
And I don't know what's productive about it. I mean, I know it gets votes for a lot of people, and I know it makes gets clicks and eyeballs and ratings yeah. and things like that. But just to freak kids out, it's trauma and it's abuse. Like we go, you know, California is like we've invented something. And uh, Dawson, I think you can find this vid because it makes me laugh. We have, and Byron, I think you found it before with Dr. Drew, but we've invented something called third-hand smoke mm. in California. And you can ruin a kid with third-hand smoke. So, first, so second-hand smoke is when somebody's smoking by you and you're inhaling that. Third-hand is when you're smoking in your bathrobe on the patio and then you come back into the apartment and you smell like smoke on your clothes or the curtains or, or whatever. Like when I get into an Uber of a guy who right. just smoked and that's it's in the third hand smoke here. and that will kill kids as well. So we're very concerned with kids. I'll play this ad cuz uh you don't if you don't think uh, the government's full of shit. This is from the Mayo Clinic. Smoking is bad for you. So is secondhand smoke, which is smoke you inhale from someone else's cigarette. And now there's third-hand smoke to worry about, especially for children. And I'll say, do you smoke in the house with, oh, doctor, I will never smoke in the house with the grandkids. I will go outside in 40 degree blow weather before I would smoke with the grandkids. I said, that's wonderful. When you come back in and they sit on your lap, do they say, grandma, you smell like smoke? She says, yes. I said, well, if they smell it, they inhale it. If they inhale it, they absorb it. Dr. Stephen Kopetsky says there are about 3,000 chemicals in cigarette All right. smoke. All right, so they invent shit to scare people. But the point is, is we're concerned about kids so much so that we've invented something called third-hand smoke. But we're not concerned by freaking them the fuck out with shit like COVID. Like, literally making them think they're going to die or their parents are going to die like that. Or freaking them out just... In general, the climate change, for instance, like just beating them over the head with, you know, if you ask your average 11 year old, would you rather contend with third hand smoke or no civilization in 11 years <laughs> when you'll be the ripe old age of 22? Like, I think they take third hand smoke. So what we do is we protect them. We try to protect them from all the scourges of, of racism and third hand smoke and climate change. But then we freak them the fuck out with it, with everything else. There's actually good science behind what you were speaking about earlier about like fear and 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 sort of. And you were saying like, um, you know, how you respond to stress as if it's like a physical thing. Like I have really bad anxiety, uh, generalized anxiety disorder. That's what it's called. And I speak to someone about it a lot. And there's great literature and and research about. Um, exposing yourself to the fear, exposing yourself to the thoughts, exposing yourself to whatever you're worrying about instead of running from it, trying to protect yourself from it, uh, that actually is how you heal it. So if you are afraid, if it is like using fear as a tactic is messed up because you, you it's supposed to be like keep it away instead of kind of embracing it. And I know you can't do that with cigarettes and stuff like that. I'm saying like in terms of just like mental stuff with like being afraid of thinking the storm's worse than it is, thinking mm -hmm. that giving a, an 11 year old too much to worry about. I was 11 when 9-11 happened and I remember being like not the same after that because mm. it was so incredibly sad and, and terrible, especially being from where I'm from, the streets are named after people who passed away. It just, it, it's always around you. I think about it all the time and I was so young and when you, uh, t talking about kids, like, yeah, I think it's it's not so bad to expose them to stuff if, if it's done in a healthy, not like this is going to get you versus like, this is a thing we have to be aware of. Like, I think the happiest civilizations in the world just like accept death. And, yes. And it's like, it's not a big deal. And if you really worry about it, try to like take pills to live longer and stuff, that's just going to make it worse and worse. Yeah, what works is sort of like, I think they call it exposure therapy or something, but yeah. At the beginning of my career, I was a very nervous flyer. Okay. I was fearful of flying. I never got on an airplane from zero to 30. And then all of a sudden, I'm booked 
doing things all over the country. Wow. And I was really nervous. That's mm-hmm. why we said have a safe flight. That's right. I should have <laughs> listened. I was nervous. And then I start flying every weekend, and I, I never think about it in, anymore. It's just literally repetition. 100%. All right. Speaking of flying, I have a hypothetical. I talked about it a little bit on yesterday's show, but I really started drilling deeper down on it, and and I and I have a thought experiment hypothetical for for you, Chris Dawson, possibly Byron. Um, so I was saying yesterday that uh, when I was going through the airport in Florida, I checked a bag at JetBlue, and now I was making my way through security, and a young black, probably twenty three year old woman with a mask around her chin uh, stopped me as I was about to enter security. And it was with a bag that I'd travel all over the country with many airports. It's got wheels on it, but it's sort of soft, duffily with some wheels. And uh, I throw it up in every overhead I go to. There has been occasions when you get the gate check, Mm. that's when the flight's full. Right. Okay, and you get there late. But as I was entering security, this woman who worked for TSA, I believe, young woman, mask around her chin. She said, uh, you can't bring that on the flight. And I said, oh, I bring it on all the flights. And she said, yeah, it's too big. And I said, no, no, it's soft. I just push it up there. And she goes, now you got to go. You got to go check it. And I said, oh, I'll get I'll gate check it then when I get on the flight. And she goes, no, no, you got to go back to JetBlue or wherever you're from and get in line (laughs) and pay 50 bucks. And I'm like, I've never had to do this before. And I'm kind of running late. And Jeff Blue's all the way 100 yards back that way. And there's a line. And why don't you just let me go through? And then if Jet Blue thinks it's too big, then they'll gate check it. And she goes, nope. And I go, um, well, there's she, there's the template, the bag template thing over there. She goes, yeah, see, yeah, you yeah. fit the bag template. And I go, okay. And because it's soft, I just push it in and it slides and drops right down. But there's an inch hanging out lengthwise on each side mm-hmm. past the template. And she goes, too big. Jeez. And I said, I, it's not too big. It dropped right in, and I carry this all over the country. She just go check it. Go back to JetBlue. And I was like, okay. So I go back and check it. It costs 40 bucks and takes half an hour. And I'm <laughs> like, all right, did I have to go through? Do we have to do this? Now, the reason I know we don't have to do it is because it doesn't exist anywhere else. I've, I've never encountered this, but she's doing. So then I have this thought, and this is the thought experiment. I go, wait a minute. She's 23. She's black. She's got a mask around her chin. The mask around her chin, nobody else is wearing a mask. That suggests a certain political affiliation. Yeah, of course. And she's 23. She was like raised on a steady diet of systemic racism and oppressive racism and white guys over six foot tall are the cause. Old white guys are all the problem. And I'm like, oh, I'm a, a, I'm a, I'm the template for the white guy that's causing all the, you know, the reason your mama couldn't succeed in this society is because of me and my ancestors. And then I start thinking, I go, was, was she just doing that? Because I'm the dude who's been by the way, if I was the cause of all the oppression that was going on, then, you know, maybe. And they talk a lot about power and getting power back and taking power and having your power. And so I was like, mm-hmm. is that just her using her power against the old heterosexual? She could tell. White guy. <laughs> I have a certain musk yeah. <laughs> that I give off. Uh, Third hand smoke. Who's six foot two, right? And she, so I'm like, walk back and I'm having the thought. And then I thought to myself, oh, this is the thought they've been having for the last 50 years. Like, did that cop only pull me over because? Mm. Right. And so now I'm thinking that and I'm going, wow, this is a weird place we're at because this 23-year-old angry woman with a mask around her chin is basically telling me to dance for her. Like, I I dropped it in the template. I go, I'm running late. I, I can check it. And she's like, tough shit. Go back and go do what I tell you to do. So then I started doing, the, here's the thought experiment. And then this one, I was like, what would she have done? What if I was wearing a mask? Mm. 
I think that's more of Would what it was. Would that help my right. case? And then, what if I was black and wearing a mask? Right. And then, what, what, what if I was a female in black and wearing a mask? And then, what if I was wearing a Tupac shirt? <laughs> would I have made it? Would she, would she have not looked up or not waved me back? What do you think? Would the mask have got me through? Alone, or would I had to resort to the Tupac shirt? Which, by the way, you know what? This is my new policy. Everybody at LAX is by all security, all the all security is black everywhere. I'm just getting a Tupac shirt. I'll just pull it over like Kelsey does when they win the championship. Yeah, I'll just, flying uniform. Yeah. I, I don't care if I'm wearing a hoodie. I'll just pull it over the top. Well, I'll take it off after I get through. After I get through security at LAX, but this was in Florida. All right, would the mask alone get me through? I, I can, can I ask you a couple of questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. First of all, how often do you fly? Often. Yeah. Do you have like a JetBlue card or something? I fly all different airlines. It's all like, you know, whatever gets to Naples on. Why? Why do you, do you have any reason that you don't choose a specific one? Because this Everybody is one of the benefits tells me that to would do never that. happen to you if you had I know. Like I'm, I'm a fool. But what, <laughs> what happens, what happens is, is. There's two shows Friday night in Naples, Florida. There's one flight that leaves at 6 a.m. out of LAX to whatever the closest airport is, and that's a JetBlue flight. And if you don't want to go the night before, you got to you got to leave at wow. 6 in the morning. Okay. And it was kind of the same thing getting out, like coming back. Like if you want to leave at 4 in the afternoon and you want a direct flight to LAX, but you, you're right in principle. Well, I'm just I was just 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 wondering. The second thing is it's interesting where your mind goes and where my mind goes. Because, like, I will find everything in life. I'm like that annoying friend that's always connected. You ever seen, like, a pup named Scooby-Doo back in the day? He'd always blame Red Herring. Right. And he did everything. And he never did anything. Wait, was that Scrappy-Doo? Uh, it, it was one of the ones I watched. It was like a remake in the Oh, 90s. there was a remake of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, it was like a pup named Scooby-Doo. Because Scooby-Doo's had a puppy friend named Scrappy yeah, 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 yeah. at some point. But continue. No, so uh, my thing is always like, I believe that many people in the world, it's a more of like an emotional thing. Like they, that, that girl didn't want to, she doesn't want to work there. No. She doesn't want to be there. No. She wants to be doing something else. That's true. And if she can inconvenience you, you feel a little bit of that pain that she feels. She does not want to be there. And she sees you. Maybe she recognizes you. Maybe she thinks you have money. Maybe whatever. She, whatever power she feels you have over her, that she's like, if I can inconvenience this guy for five minutes, that's a job well done. Because when I go places, I'm just so, I'm just, it's so sad how miserable everyone is. It's I agree. But what I'm saying is, is we can all agree that if her and I went to high school together and she recognized me, this wouldn't happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, right? for, of yeah. course that, yeah, that's, okay, right. so uh, like, you're saying right. how close to that do we get? And if her favorite band was a tribe called Quest. And you're wearing that shirt. And I was wearing that shirt, <laughs> this wouldn't have happened, right? Jeez, I don't know. Airlines have such bad reputations. I, I could I could see them doing anything. All I'm, right, so mask on, <laughs> black female, Tupac <laughs> shirt. Still tells me to turn it around. What oh, do you no, think? no, no. Those, you those think would no? work. Those you would think work. those would work? Color would work. You don't need the mask if you're black, I think. But here's the problem. We're, <laughs> the problem with our society and where we are now is I'm asking myself that That's question. Okay. You're doing the thing you hate. I'm doing what I hate. I'm when? dragging the bag back on. It's just only because I'm old whitey right. or is she doing this to everyone? But it is interesting how the turntables have turned. Yes. How... Um, black people have spent the last 50 years thinking every white person is racist, and now we're like, uh, more than 50. I being, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, okay, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm horrible at history. Well, yeah. So now we're all having our thoughts. Like, how'd you even yeah. get this job, baby? That's is progress. that affirmative action? That's progress. Yeah. So, Way to go, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I think so. I'm back to. I think we should all just be colorblind and and leave it leave it alone. Please. But I'm still kind of getting down with my Tupac shirt through the airport. I idea think that's a winning. I think that's a winning way to go. I've been treated disrespectfully by the folks at uh, LAX who seem to be Tupac fans, and I think that would work. Serendipitously and unironically, I was at Ross over Christmas break because I like to go on a treasure hunt every now and then, and. The Tupac hoodie that I was about to buy was just too tight 
I mm. almost bought one, but it was just too tight. Mm. Too tight. And I didn't really look into it, but that would have been the perfect that opportunity. Got me through you that your travel hoodie. Yeah, you're right. You should Tupac probably fit though. Hoodie. They might they might know it's a travel Tupac hoodie if it doesn't fit. Right. I don't you know. might think he just bought this. Exactly. Well, it's, it's too risky. I mean, she could be a Biggie fan. Oh yeah, you gotta watch out for that. Dude, go with Cube. Too... Let's go with Cube. Also, go with twenty. Cube? She divide. said she was around twenty-three. Do you think she knows who they? How about is there a T-shirt that just says "Legends of Rap" <laughs> and it's all rap stars that have gone too oh, soon? Yeah, they've got they, that. Sure. That would get me. Maybe I think that'd be a way to get stars. Maybe you do the Kings, Kings of Comedy. comedy. Like, Kings of or get yeah. it airbrushed. Yeah, I mm. could have it. Oh yeah, because that says you know keeping it real. That's I that, saw yeah. you got that on the street. I saw a dude at 7-Eleven with a Kobe hoodie, mm. and it had like Kobe's 90 song. pictures of Kobe. Mm. So there was Universal. no mistake. Kobe's Universal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So dearly departed Toby Keith t-shirt, not so much. No. no. Right? But Kobe. Should have been a cowboy. That's, Kobe, not Toby. Okay. All right. Let's get that, <laughs> let's get that Kings of Comedy tour shirt, circa 1999. Oh, oh, oh what is this? We have dope. we have all the dead rappers? <laughs> yeah, they just put up a well, shirt. Well, uh, Snoop's alive. Is that who else? Was oh, Snoop on there? Yeah, yeah they're not there. all dead. But that's okay. That's okay. Flava Flav. All right, I could wear that T-shirt through LAX. Yeah, on That'd there. be good. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I get a little discount at the Homeboys Bakery? You know? I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. Okay. It's worth a shot. All right. It's worth a shot. <laughs> maybe you could. Like maybe that. we could split the yeah. difference and go for Treos Tacos. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a little discount there. All right. Let's take a break. We got some uh, news. Eric's gonna hanging out, and we'll do all that right after this. Well, Simply Safe. Love these guys. When you love someone, you protect them. Simply Safe. Twenty four seven professional monitoring. Under a buck a day. They've been sponsors here for years. And we all use their product. It's easy, fast, and simple to set up. Peel and stick. Batteries last up to 10 years. Very ergonomically, nicely designed. Best home security system of 2023, according to U.S. News and World Report. HD cameras for indoors and outdoors. Advanced motion and entry sensors. Hazard sensors to detect fires, floods, and more. 60 days risk-free. You can try it. If you don't love it, return your system for a full refund. Simply Safe even comes with return shipping. And right now, you can get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Just visit Simply Safe. Two eyes in there. SimplySafe.com slash Adam. That is SimplySafe.com slash Adam and get those savings. Don't ever speak for women. Men would speak for women. You know, like, don't ever speak for a woman. It's like, yeah, I totally fucking agree. Of course. Yes. It's a human being. Don't ever speak for somebody else. Then I go to a barbecue. Hey, Eric, you want a hot dog? He ain't already. He's full. <laughs> You're full. To go, okay, I don't know how the fuck this is equality, but all right. I hear that shit on the news, social media, equality. I'm like, I'm, I'm down for equality, equality. I'm like, equality, equality, equality. <laughs> you move in with a woman, it's like, e we're equals, right? Yeah, can I pick out the color of the couch for the living room? Fuck you, that's my house. <laughs> Eric D'Alessandro is on the Adam Carolla Show. Truer words, never spoken. <laughs> Um, all right, let's see. What's, uh, I want to give a plug. Sorry. Make sure and watch the uh, special I Don't Understand, which is available now on YouTube. All right, we'll do a little news, and uh, Eric yeah. will hang out, chime in. Right. So um, in Oklahoma, so a couple years ago, there was this women's uh, game, a basketball game, mm -hmm. and uh, they one, one team took the knee during the national anthem to support, show their support for BLM. Mm -hmm. And this commentator went on this vitriolic racist rant. Mm. He was in the end where his, his mic was still on. Right? Oh, hot mic. This? Hot mic. Hot mm. mic incident. Mm. Um, a little too hot. Yeah. I would watch a uh, doc called Hot Mike, and they'd oh. be like, is that about some male stripper died of AIDS? No, no. It's, it's just a compilation of everyone that <laughs> another fucking mic was on. I know. <laughs> Oh yeah, Joy Reed just got hit uh, last week. Oh, Something right. Happened to her. So, um, so what happened, though, was, so this guy, I'll, uh, I have the transcript, I'll read it later. But anyway, so 
this newspaper in the Oklahoman wrote about this incident, but they they named the wrong guy as the guy who made the comments. Oh my oh, god! So he was wrongly claimed. That's bad. And um, and by the way, the guy who did make the comments, he was a former youth pastor who thought his mic was off, mm-hmm. and he blamed the racist tirade on diabetes. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know, but uh, that's mm-hmm. that's what he was saying. So anyway, so a jury found the newspaper that defamed the the wrongly accused guy. Uh, they awarded him five million dollars in wow. actual damages and a further twenty million in other damages too. Really? Yeah, because just because of the, the defamation of using the wrong name for this. But he won. Did the other the guy who was defamed work in a, a like? There are certain jobs where that's that's a backbreaker. Like if you're an administrator at a college or something. Yeah, but good if point, you're good point. if you're a construction worker, you're going to get a raise. <laughs> you know, you can't you can't claim damages if you work True. at a logging camp. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to get moved up to foreman. <laughs> so I got to find out what this guy did. You know, because it didn't necessarily hurt him. That that's all. Does it say what he did? Um, it doesn't say what, what he because did. Because that, the, the, the accusation, that's all that matters now. Yeah. It, that no one ever looks at the reprint well, or the, uh, the correction. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, they, so the claim was that the newspaper, though, Coleman, act, acted with actual malice when they published this story. Mm-hmm. So. A lot um, of, a lot of articles do sound like that now. They're not, yeah. they're not so much, uh, news. It's more opinion based. Yes. It, you know? Yeah, so he, he accused the paper of defamation and the intentional infliction of emotional distress. Mm-hmm. All right, so he's getting paid. Yeah, so this is a – yeah, and it was a, a terrible a terrible incident, but he got, he got $25 the, the, million from The it. diabetes is interesting. The I don't diabetes get it. defense – well, I'll tell you what it could be based on. It, you guys are too young, but uh, you ever heard of something called the Twinkie defense? No. Chris? Uh, no, but I'm, I'm planning on using it now. Go the, ahead. The guy, a ver- the most famous defense has been the Twinkie defense, as, as they named it, because I think the guy who shot Harvey Milk, first gay mayor of San Francisco, right. was another um, city councilman or something who just went into the office, basically, city council and just shot him dead, claimed he freaked out on junk food. They called it the Twinkie defense and uh, got a very short and light sentence. Yes. Wow. Because of the Twinkie defense, which is right next to the diabetes defense, <laughs> if you think about it. Like I mean, what the hell is in uh, what's in a Twinkie? I'm sure you can make a you can make a case that that's that's probably not. Yeah. Now, I don't think he was. I think we called it the Twinkie defense. I don't think he was physically OD'd on Twinkies, but he oh, like a nickname. For he, junk had a, food. he had a nickname or like. A certain cult of young gay prostitute, yeah. but hostess should sue for <laughs> defamation for the hostess should definitely sue of, for defamation. Uh, Twinkie defense is a uh, derisive uh, label for uh, An improbable, improbable legal, legal defense. defense. Yeah, well, that well they'll call anything that's a thin. Legal defense, the Twinkie defense, but there was some. There's a reason they call it the yeah. Twinkie uh, defense. Uh, uh, Harvey Milk it was yeah. on his assassination. That was the. Um, it's for a, a Twinkie. I know offense. you were out of the room. I said all that, I, I, but so the, the guy only got like seven years or something, and then insane. I think killed himself at some point. Well, we can figure it out. But twenty five million that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty good thing to. And you know, you ask your friends, would you do this for this much money? Would you go? Would you Would you take twenty five million? If there was a leaked tape of you screaming all of this horribly, oh. horribly racist stuff. Oh, and, and you were accused of it, but didn't do it. Uh, yeah, I, but but everybody everybody thinks you I did would. It. I, everyone thinks I'm a racist anyway. So didn't you hear the last segment? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll take the twenty five, and that'll be a lateral move for me. I'll still have great standing amongst my friends. Well, this is what this is what he said that he he blamed diabetes. So when they were kneeling, this, this is his quote: "They're kneeling, f them." I hope uh, Norman gets their ass kicked. F them. I hope they lose. Come on, Midwest City. They're going to kneel like that? Hell with them. They aren't even saluting the flag. Some of them aren't effing N-words. Aren't? Oh, yes. okay. Some I of see. Them aren't. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I agree with most of that, but the very end, you know, okay. he, crossed, he crossed the line. <laughs> he did cross the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe if he was wearing a Tupac shirt, it would have. Oh, could have saved him. <laughs> Legends of rap, gone too soon. Yeah. You know? yeah. The mm-hmm. Kings of Comedy. Kings of Comedy. Yeah. He was wearing a Kings of Comedy shirt. That's <laughs> right. I don't think the Cosby shirt's going to get you out. <laughs> yeah. 
The Kings of Cosby. <laughs> it's the blackest stand-up special ever. Uh, so, um, in other uh, news, so a, the mother of a Michigan teenager who killed four fellow students and wounded seven others during a mass shooting at Oxford High School in uh, mm-hmm. 2021. Remember, we told we were talking about this story, like it was a Michigan school shooter, and they were charging the parents. This yeah, is the first time I we always were, said they should. Yeah, well, a jury has found that the mom uh, is guilty of involuntary manslaughter today. So, well, look, if your dog gets out off the leash or over the fence and bites somebody, that's on you. Yeah, you know, and you know, I guess there are instances where. You're not culpable, but most of the time it's like the kid had severe depression and we could see his sketchbook was just a bunch of skulls and and uh, we kept writing Hitler over and over again. And then we, <laughs> we bought him his first Glock when he was 14. You know, like if you're going to be involved. Ha- yeah. Have, there, have there been many of where like it was like they were just totally fine and the kid was just an outlier? I feel like that's rare. Yes. I. You should know. Well, here's what I would say. Look. It's either nature or it's nurture. Either way, you fuck this kid up. Yeah. So. Right. So, I, like, but but bigger picture, uh, you're on the hook. Like when you hear about, but now, so here's the thing. The politicians that would like this mom to go to jail for not knowing what this kid was up to and leading to these murders. If you said, well, then how about the 13-year-old inner city black kid who's running around at three in the morning and firing a gun? They'd go, yeah, not him. And it's like, I would say it equally applies. If you got a 13-year-old and it's 2 a.m. and it's Wednesday and they're running around somewhere in the streets of Chicago, then you, too, will be responsible. Like, so morning of the shooting, the school calls the parents. It's like, hey, we we found some violent drawings on on one of his assignments. Uh, He's searching online for bullets. Mm. Uh, he's watching oh shooting God. videos in class. Uh, can you please come get him? We're worried about him. And they're like, uh, we're working right now. And uh, so oh, you, if wow. you want to just send him yeah. home, uh, he can walk home, but he'll be alone. And then the school's like, well, we don't want him to walk home alone. He's going to kill himself. Mm. So and then and then so that's that's what happened. And then it gets even deeper. Yeah, to be fair, if somebody called me about my kids, I'd, I, I, if I was at work, I'd probably like, just tell What's them. What's the opposite of the Twinkie defense? Because that's what that is. Is he looking for bullets for a gun, or is he trying to make an old-fashioned? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of bourbon is he Yeah, what are you talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. And then it gets even deeper, because she texted. Uh, they, there were some text messages shown, and it was to the mom's, uh, a man she was having an affair with, uh, and uh. said that the shooting could have been prevented. Mm. So... Good. Yeah. Let, well, listen, anyway, she's been charged. The dad, the dad still is uh, going to trial soon. But you start going after the parents, the shit stops. Well, like I said, whether it's the inner city example or whether it's the rural shoot up the school example, I guarantee it would take a huge chunk out of this. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Because you look. I mean, first off, your kid has a gun. Shouldn't you know? You know, your kid has a gun. Or half the time, you bought the kid they got a gun, the gun. They got him the first, gun. usually bar mitzvah, but sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, the goyim usually, engage yeah. in this behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I feel like you have to be more involved in their lives. How could you not know what the hell they're, they're going through? I That's know. It's crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, to not know your kid's insane. Like, yeah, so she'll be uh, sentenced soon and uh, the dad will be charged. Or he'll Good. Be going to trial. Set a precedent. Uh, so, Saturday Night Live. Mm hmm. They, their their next host. They named their next host mm. Shane right. Gillis. I love it. Shane Gillis has been set to host uh, this Saturday. A controversial move, as if we all remember. Uh, we we all certainly do. He was uh, fired after being hired shortly after after um, comments surf resurfaced of him mm-hmm. saying uh, things about Asian people, or gay mm-hmm. people. Yeah, and now he's just been killing it doing stand up. Mm-hmm. And SNL's like, come host. Good. Nice guy. Good for them. They've seen probably the errors in their ways. And also, I guess, leaning into it now, like there is no I mean, I there, there is bad publicity, but not so much anymore. Like, I think that's the new I think that's the new thing. I uh, I don't know why I keep thinking about uh, the NASCAR driver, Dick Trickle. Brought it up you on have, the show you have been thinking about him. Dick Trickle. Dick Trickle's a NASCAR driver. <laughs> now, he only ran NASCAR for a few seasons, but he was the number one winningest dirt track oval driver in history. Run a thousand races, right? Um, 
he could have gone by Richard Trickle, <laughs> but he went by Dick Trickle because <laughs> it got it. him a lot of attention. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. And they'd be like, Keith Oberman would be on Sports Center in like 1989 going, NASCAR driver Dick Trickle came in 21st place at the Talladega. It's like he didn't need to report on him. He wanted to say it, you yeah, know? Of course. And Dick Trickle was like, hey, man, people are saying my name. And he liked it. Also, the thing that was, I just watched a mini doc on him last night. The, the thing that was crazy about him, picture this in today's world. He liked to smoke. And he liked to smoke when he was in that NASCAR. Oh, my God. And he had a cigarette lighter installed in his NASCAR. Like in, in a world where they're drilling holes and everything to get three ounces of weight out right. of it. He's having an electronic oh device installed in the console of his... Of his One that so, produces fire. Right. <laughs> and so when, a, when they'd be under like a full course caution or something he'd just pull a cigarette out push the you there's no way you're going to light That's a lighter incredible. when you're going 80 miles an hour in a car with no windows but he got that thing then he started wearing a full face helmet now the cigarette had to go in at a 45 degree angle and he would light it like, like during cautions i mean you're still driving during a full course caution you're just not passing anybody yeah jeez commitment what, to what, excellence. what year was this this is in the probably 89, 90. Wow. And you're also smoking inside of a bomb, essentially. The <laughs> car's know. got 40 gallons of 108 <laughs> octane in it. It's just like, no, I guarantee, in a NASCAR, all the fuel lines are just, I, the fuel lines are right next to the lighter. Oh, my there's, God. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. Oh, Dick Trickle, you dog. Yeah. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> The cigarette, I guess the fuel lines are going from the back of the car, <laughs> right through the car, right by the cigarette lighter. Holy shit. And, this guy's uh, nuts. Is he still right alive? Now, now, committed suicide. Oh, well. Yeah. But not. Not in the car. Not in the car. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. So the Mayo Clinic says missed. us talking about smoking is oh, smoke. Oh, yeah. I mean, what, what about everyone who was behind Dick Trickle <laughs> on a parade lap while he was smoking? Is that secondhand smoke or thirdhand smoke? All the above. Oh, so the guys behind him and the cars behind him were getting secondhand smoke, but the pit crew was getting thirdhand they're, because they had to take the net down I mean, and I'd stuff ask, like they're that. All dead, they're all dead. Oh, they're all dead. Yeah, so all right, dead. All right. Um, so Chrissy Teigen, mm -hmm. she's uh, she's under a little bit of fire because she, uh, a la Alyssa Milano, she went to Instagram to share a video of her daughter announcing her uh, Girl Scout cookie sale. Oh, why do I hate Chrissy Teigen and John Legend so much? <laughs> Did they dance a little too much at the Grammys during the performances? You know, they, they cut to them, and they're digging oh, every performance. He's super woke, and then she's super weird and angry. She's I, like she's she's like the woke that's, like, mean about it. Yeah, she's you know? mean she has woke. Gone, I feel like right. it, it, been a mean girl it, the, about the, it. Didn't it used to be hippies were, like, accepting of everything and, like, Dude, whatever, man. What, that's now, right. Now hippies are, like, mean. If you, if you don't <laughs> yes. use the right eggs, they really get a... Well, they're always... so. Nerds and hippies are the angriest people in our society. Okay. But nobody really knew it because they were kind of talking about peace and love mm. all the time. And nerds and hippies don't pose a, th a physical threat. So they kind of kept it Ooh, down yeah, low. And then at some point they became weaponized. But but they're always the angry. The, the, well, first off, anyone who's talking about the same thing like peace and love and, and brotherly love and ending all war and stuff, they're always the angriest, most fucked up people <laughs> on the planet. So, yes, now we have angry, woke people. That's the that's we have weaponized. We have we have weaponized, woke people. Can you listen to John Legend's with. music? Do you like it? I, I, I recognize he's a talented artist, but mm -hmm. he's. I don't know if he's. He, I don't feel like he's as she is. I think there's a p whip situation going mm. on here, mm. and um, although I don't know if you can say p whip to a black guy because then it has brings up conjures imagery from the past. You know, you can't say whip. You can't say whip. yeah. So um, he's p paddled. I guess mm. we could say paddle. Um, she's nuts. And uh, speaking of the Grammys, I was looking at it. Everyone is 
30 pounds lighter than they were at the last Grammys. I think there's an Ozempic thing going on. Oh, interesting. Over there. There's Everybody's big, uh... way down in the weight department. Like, Oprah is down 40 pounds. Well, she's publicly down Her, Ozempic, her friend right? Gail is down a bushel herself. They're around the beach every day. Chrissy Teigen, who can, you know, bulk up a little bit. She's down. Like, all the... The skinny ones are skinnier. The ones who are fat are now medium. Like everybody yeah. just slid 30 pounds down. And I think that's Ozempic. And they're all wearing like a thong back with a fishnet. Like over there. They're all like, fuck, I'm, I'm skinny. I'm showing, I'm showing my skinny they, ass off. My, my friend just sent me a, an article about there's like this new boom in Hollywood. All, all like their faces are like getting sucked in and like the cheeks are really really thin it, unhealthy thin is kind of back mm -hmm. that's like where the trend this you know thick girl which was popular forever is now like it's going back to like the super skinny look which is just unhealthy uh, Agreed. I agree I, I yeah I don't I don't the, the, the John Legend and, and Chrissy Teigen thing though like it, that it upsets me because I feel like th there's a big thing going back to even like the Shane Gillis thing where like this is the side that's, and I'm not the most political person. I'm sure we disagree on stuff, but like, this is the side that preaches redemp the redemption story. Everybody's worthy of redemption. Criminals need lesser jail time. You know, uh, drug addicts who steal just they need love and compassion. People don't judge people by their worst mistake. But then when it's someone like Shane Gillis, you must judge him by his worst mistake, and that's <laughs> all he ever is. He is not worthy of redemption. He did something wrong, and we should make him suffer in, for the rest of his life. It's really just, it's sad, because like, I feel like Chrissy Teigen and John Legend are always like, love and peace, but like if you are you know, on the opposite side of the aisle, they'll, Chrissy Teigen bullied girls on Twitter, called them like yeah. ugly and stuff, and it's like, this is the opposite of what you're preaching. This is, this is hate. This is not love. This is, this is the complete opposite of that. So like even even get, getting too skinny, that Adele got shit for losing weight. Like yep. what the hell was going on? Like this it's crazy to me how this is how that could be political. That's something I talk about a lot in stand up. I'm like I'm I'm confused why this was political. Right, uh, like the first yeah, the first part of your special you're talking about how like the identity politics are rule over everything else. Like, oh yeah, you want to do this well, you're, that means you're a Republican or that means you're a liberal. Yeah. Automatically. Yeah, and like now body positivity is I guess liberal, I guess. And well, then, anyone and then, and then working on your body is Republican. That's just that's <laughs> insane to me. What Anybody the fuck? who sends an R.I.P. Toby Keith tweet out is going to make a list <laughs> of non-Biden voters. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. So, what was the story with Chrissy Teigen? Though? So, oh yeah. Well, anyway, so she went on Instagram and said, "Hey, buy my daughter's Girl Scout cookies," and everyone's like, oh, yeah. "Whoa." You have a huge platform, and you're going to use it for this. Like, buy, you're you're hurting all the other girls who are trying to sell who don't have super famous moms. Mm. Like, they they just think it's an unfair advantage. Yeah, but and also, if you sell enough Girl Scout cookies, you can get like a Schwinn bike or Knott's Berry Farm windbreaker. Right, all shit. <laughs> their kids probably have access to yeah, like we'll if they stand. needed it that badly yeah. like when i was tasked to do that shit in little league and stuff you sold as many candy bars as you could because you needed a fucking bike like, <laughs> did you, did you go? didn't have five electric bikes in the garage and one of six you had yeah. you were walking everywhere that is kind of funny when when when, when rich parents role play middle class people Right. Yes, because yes. that's not like you just said. <laughs> and and they do this thing where it's like I want her to grow up in a normal. Yeah, you yeah. have twelve thousand square feet in Bel Air. Yeah, and, and I want her to learn how to work for something. But yeah, I'm going to put it on my Instagram. Yeah, her her pool has an infinity edge. <laughs> She's not going to be normal. Yeah, get her above ground pool. <laughs> if you want her to be normal, then go get a place out in Reseda and get above ground pool, and l raise her in a normal way. Right. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Did you do that? Did you go sell candy bars? <sighs> okay. First basketball team. I remember doing that. I couldn't sell things because that would have meant I'd have to like go to someone and like <laughs> tap them on the shoulder or like knock on the door and go, can you do this? I would never, I, I was too fucked up to like walk up to people and go, can I have a dollar and sell? I, I, I couldn't do it. What do you mean you're fucked up? I, I don't know. There was, there was something wrong with me and there's still there still is like if i'm talking to someone and they go well it was nice to meet you alan i'll go yeah it's nice to meet you i would never say my name's not alan 
Hmm. I would never say that. And and I I told you when yeah. when I put this head in the beer is way too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's now we're talking about booze, right? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's off him. <laughs> and the uh, and then there is no no. I sat there staring at I it for know, a long time, going I. <laughs> But, but I know you're 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 kind of a non-confrontational guy. If someone stepped in front of me in line at the supermarket, like I wouldn't tap them on the shoulder and go, "Excuse you," like I wouldn't do that. You eat it. I did a job when I was 19. I told you 10 bucks an hour, worked eight hours, and the guy's like, "All right, well that's fifty dollars," and I was like, I just looked at it and went, "Thanks." And I just, I didn't even but say you had, anything. Now you have incentive, right? Like you sell this many candy bars, you get that Schwinn bike. Yeah, so my problem was is I couldn't confront people. I couldn't knock on doors. I couldn't stop people. I couldn't get friends of the family and try to sell them. But I ate everything. I loved chocolate, and there was nothing in my house. <laughs> there was a bill. So oh, no. I would always get into the bars and not sell the bars. And, and I would kind of do a thing where I'd, like, break one open, and I'd go, I'll just take an inch off the end. And this would just be my one bar. <laughs> if you did you it know? to all of them, they won't know. <laughs> yeah, at some point, I would, oh, and it would, it would cause me great anguish and grief. It, at some point, they'd go, the East Valley Trojans would go, all right, it's been two weeks, so you have to return the cases with the bars. <laughs> and there were 20 bars in the case. And they gave you a mini manila envelope that you're supposed to stuff the money in, and each bar was a dollar. So it's like, all right, well, you, there's 10 bars left in the case, and there's $10, so that math where you sold 10 bars. you know. But I had a serious math problem because there was two dollars in the case and eight bars were missing and because i ate because i ate them yeah, there's chocolate on my face and so i would just be like I, can what if i just push the box you know and then just kind of push them in with the other boxes oh. or tell mr gallagher somebody stole the bars or like how am i because if i said to my parents listen i'm down six bucks worth of bars they'd be like i, I we don't have any money yeah. so you're screwed <laughs> it was always i always think, see all of them what I really didn't, what I should have factored in back then is Mr. Gallagher and Mr. Steen and uh, Mr. Kramer and all the other coaches when I was nine definitely sized up my family mm. and should have went like, give the kid a break. Yeah. He's got to fucking go home with these assholes. <laughs> like, look at his mom. Like, they had, I should have known that they knew that, that we were you know, from the wrong side of the tracks. And they probably would have went, he should have just fucking ate the candy bars and we'll just chip in two bucks each. And we'll, that's a know, pretty, I, I never realized, well, that's a pretty uh, heavy thing to give to a, a young kid, especially like you said, a young kid without money. Here's a bunch of free chocolate that like you have to just stare at and not touch. <laughs> oh, I'd go back to my dad's <laughs> shit box in North Hollywood and that box would just sit across the room and be at night. would be the whisper. Yeah. Wake up. Who's talking? It's a chocolate bar. It's a siren song of the chocolate bar. Don't you want to taste? I can't. I yes. gotta. I gotta sell them. <laughs> you can figure that one out. Come on, man. That's tomorrow's problem. You have nine days before you gotta turn. A lot could happen in nine yeah. days. You're nine years old. That's a long time from right now. Listen, why don't you pour yourself a glass of milk? Come back and let's just talk about this. <laughs> it's not right, Mr. Gallagher. Get angry, Mr. Gallagher. Come on. <laughs> your story <laughs> he knows you yeah i mean that that that's i couldn't how would i do with this box it, the house was 600 square feet where we're going to put this box that i i couldn't get to it you know so yeah i didn't have a good experience with the with the chocolate yeah sorry maybe if chrissy teigen was your mom yeah <laughs> oh god can you imagine beating off to your mom <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, let's get you uh, some plugs in yes. here. I Don't Understand is the name of the special. It's very funny. It's available now on uh, YouTube. And dates, live dates, tickets for Eric. And I will um, I'll spell it out. Eric, it's D-A-L-E-S-S-A-N-D-R-O dot com for Vinny. Very funny experience. All right. Another funny comedian. Dusty Slay is going to come in and we'll talk to him right after this. 
Rosetta Stone, my kids are heading off to college soon. Maybe junior college. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. And uh, they're going to want to travel the globe. Well, they're going to have to learn a new language wherever they go. And that's where Rosetta Stone comes in, the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app. It truly immerses you in the language you're learning. 30 years, millions of users, 25 languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German, Korean, Chinese, Arabic, Drew swears by Rosetta Stone. Designed for long-term retention. No English translations. Learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. Plus, the built-in true accent feature gives you feedback on your pronunciations. Lifetime membership has all 25 languages for 50% off. It's Rosetta Stone, right, Dawson? Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, Adam Carolla Show listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash Adam. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash Adam today. We look at birds, right? And uh, I stood out my back door looking at birds so long that my neighbor put up an eight-foot privacy fence. I'm not, ma- I'm not even making that up. And I wasn't looking in his windows, you know, but sometimes I'd be looking out there, you know, and I could see in his windows. So it's like, I guess if you can see it, you're looking at it, you know what I mean? I saw him out in the backyard one day. He used to have a six-foot privacy fence. And then he, he goes, I'm about to get a new fence. And then you won't have to look at me anymore. And I was just trying to be cool and fun. And I was like, but hey, I like looking at you. That fence went up quick. You know what I mean? Dusty Slay is on the Adam Carolla Show. Dusty has a Netflix special, which is very funny, called Working Man. Um... Has a very unique style, but it's uh, endearing and uh, fun to watch and funny and charming. Charming and kind of brings the jokes around. Lots of smart callbacks and interesting concepts. So, um, highly recommend it. And in just a different pace, different vibe than what you're kind of used to seeing in a, a stand up special and clean. Yes. Much of the family. Mm hmm. Good to see you, Dusty. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And that's I appreciate you saying all those nice things. Well, it was a really good special. And I, I guess specials are sort of, for me, I'm sort of like, is it funny? And I go, yeah. But then there's another part that goes, is this interesting? Like, is it different than things I've seen before it? Well, yeah, you know, I just, I wanted to try to create the most, like, live show experience. I didn't Mm. want, you know, uh, cost was a factor, but I also didn't want a ton of camera angles where we're just cutting, cutting, you know, I love a live show. I like a complete show. I feel like uh, a complete show, you can do callbacks towards the end and, you know, bring it all back around, where it's like, in the internet age, we're like, we're just doing little clips where there's not a lot of room for that, so... That's what I try to do. And in the story or in the stand-up special, talk a lot about jobs and jobs you've had. And uh, I, I always feel like jobs, early jobs are great shapers of individuals because everyone's always talking about everyone's potential. But it, it's good to know what you don't want to do as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was a pesticide salesman for a long time, and uh, I think there's so much that I learned selling pesticides that I was able to apply to comedy later, just kind of on a business end, that I I don't know that I would have known had I not, you know, even just learning about burning bridges, right? If you're, if you get mad, I worked in the pesticide department, but if you get mad at the lumber manager one day, you think, well, that doesn't affect me because I don't sell things in the lumber area. But then next week, the lumber area guy is now the pesticide manager, right? right? So you're like, oh, the whole world connects out here. So just because you might think you're above a comedy club, don't, you know, don't be like, you know, I don't need you anymore because you may. Where where'd you work? Were you at Lowe's? Yeah, I did Lowe's and Home Depot. Lowe's. I don't know if any of that I just said made sense, but uh, I did. hope it does. It does. Um, yeah, I did Lowe's and Home Depot, a little bit of Walmart here and there. <laughs> 
It's so funny because you were telling a story. That's I, I would tell the story all the time. I would spend so much time in a Home Depot and I'd oftentimes have like a tape measure on my belt because I should be a carpenter and people come up to me like I work there all the time. And oh, it, but yeah. it was always, it was the same joke, which is they'd go, do you know where the plumbing department is? Cause I'm looking for quarter inch reducers. And I'd go, I, I don't work here. And then I'd go aisle three, you know, six <laughs> pins down to your right. Uh, yeah. You know, well, I had a vendor vest, you know, in Lowe's uh, you wear the red vest. And then if you're a vendor, you wear the gray vest, right? So a lot of time, or even if I didn't have it on though, just the shirt tucked in, people thought I worked there, but you have the vest and they go, where, where's the plumbing department? And I'm like, well, I don't work here, but I do know where it's at. So I'll take them and I would take them there. And then uh -huh. they start asking me other questions. I'm like, actually, I don't work here. And then it seems like we've had a weird moment where it's like, well, why you been helping me? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's intimate. Just, yeah, I know where these things are at. Um, yeah, when every season when I did the man show, I would do Ask Mr. Hardware, and I would just show up at a hardware store and put the vest on and fuck with everyone oh, who yeah. walked in the place. But we could never clear Lowe's or Home Depot because that would have to go to corporate. So you'd always have to find the Ma and Pa place in Santa Monica. Like that's, you couldn't. Corporate would not let the man show jack off show up and fuck with their customers. It's a liability or, or whatever it is. But the ma and pa place would do it because they didn't care and we'd give them 400 bucks or whatever it is. But I, I felt like I've worked at a hardware store. Yeah, you know, and there's something about, you know, even now I go into a Lowe's. I know where I'm going. And yeah. that impresses my wife. You know, <laughs> she's into it that I know what I'm doing in a Lowe's store. I may not be the best carpenter, but I know where the wood is. You know what I mean? You know what the best move is if you can afford it? And you're probably getting to that station in life. Doing Lowe's alone is, is fine, but doing it with a young squire and breaking off and working as a team, that's the best way to do it. You go in and you go, you go get one of those flat push carts, go to the plywood section, get a half, get 10 sheets, a half inch CDX, good one side. I'm going to the electronics department. I'm going to get some four gang boxes or whatever. And you just spread out. Right. And then at some point he pulls into the line to check out. And while he's doing that, you're running around the Lowe's throwing stuff on it. You tag team a Lowe's or Home Depot so much more efficient. Oh, yeah, I love that. I just love the idea of directing a guy around Lowe's. <laughs> you know, there is a Home Depot walking distance from here. You and I could show up and really just paint the we, town. Yeah, I'll tuck in this shirt. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a collared shirt. We'll tuck this in, and we'll get right on it. I'll get my belt. I'll get my tape measure and snap it on my belt. That'll be it. We can I, run the place. I can work a pesticide and fertilizer aisle like nobody else. <laughs> I mean, that's what I used. I used to stand on that aisle, and when people would grab the competitors' products, I would go, "Oh, let me tell you, let me tell you a little bit of of a different product." Here. Yeah, listen, Roundup's the safest product that's ever come down the pike. There will be no f lawsuits in the future. Yeah, I mean, I was g pulling out active ingredients. I was just showing people things. And people are like, oh, thank you so much. You're the most helpful guy we've ever had in here. And I'm like, yeah. Well, when, when did comedy start to creep in? Well, I was I, almost the whole time I was doing this job, I was, you know, you know, doing comedy as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I was and I. I never even, I wasn't even trying to make money in comedy. I lived in Charleston, South Carolina. I liked my life. Comedy, we didn't have any clubs, so we were just kind of doing it in bars and improv theaters. And it's like, uh, you know, you just, uh, you know, it's just a fun thing to do. You go, you know, you go, you work all day and then you have some drinks and you go out, you tell some jokes with your buddies. Women like it. It's like, this is great. And I know we'd make money sometimes, but... Uh, in 2011, I won the local competition and mm. I won a thousand bucks and I was like, oh, that's great. And then the next year I quit drinking and I won the next year's competition by so much more. It was like, I won it hands down and I was like, you know what, maybe I could do something with this. So I started just trying to work it and figure out, I spent a month in New York city. I didn't move there, but I did rent an apartment for one month. Mm-hmm. Just to, I just was doing open mics every day, just seeing if I wanted to move there. Ultimately, I settled to go to Nashville because I wanted to work the road. Mm -hmm. I thought I could go full time faster if I kept my expenses low. 
Mm-hmm. And I just – and Nashville is this really great centrally located place. Right. So I could drive to all these clubs. And that's what I did. I moved to Nashville, and in about six months, I went full-time comedy and never looked back. And your family of origin, were they supportive? Well, my family, my family all lives in Alabama, and uh, you know, I'm the first of my siblings to graduate high school. Uh, my other, you know, si- my sisters got GEDs. I mean, they're doing fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm not making fun of them, but um, you know, I don't think I just don't think there was a lot of high expectation. Like yeah. I think everybody was happy with the pesticide job, and I think they were all like, "I don't know if I'd quit that job. That's a good job, and it was a good job." But well, people who come from where you come from and uh, listen, I grew up in California and I grew up with these same people. They never said the word career. They said the word job. Yeah. I said, you got to get a job. And, and my friends and I spoke that way. Their, their parents spoke the way. It's like, when are you going to get a job? They never said, when are you going to get a career or what is your career or what shall be career was kind of highfalutin, you know, cocktail crowd talk. It was just job. Someone's got a job. Someone needs a job. There's an opening for a job. And so <clears throat> you grow up in that mentality and you want to find a job. That's it. You don't, you're not sort of reaching for the stars. You're just thinking about getting paid, getting an apartment, getting a roommate, getting out. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think maybe career is too, uh, too further down the line of thinking. Right. You're like, we need a, you know, we, you need to make money right now. Oh, yeah. You need to make money right now. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I just don't remember my parents even saying the word career, although they had career counselors who would tell you to get a job. Oh, which yeah. Which is funny. Well, yeah. It's like uh, my mom worked at a plant that made VHS tapes and she thought she would, you know, retire from there because at one point, I mean, it was cranking. Right. right? But it's like, yeah, I don't remember her saying this is my career. I was like, you know, I don't think anybody is working in a factory calling it a career. Yeah, but that's where you come from. But no pressure because all you needed to do was take care of yourself and live somewhere else than in the house you grew up in. And that was considered a victory for your parents, right? Yeah, and not, you know, not be uh, trying to get money off them, not, you know, and it's like, uh, I think when I I quit drinking, when I did that, I think... um, I think that was a big moment for all of them where it's like they never were heavy drinkers. They partied a little bit, but I think, you know, I was drinking heavier than what they were used to seeing. And uh, I think just doing that and then kind of focusing on a thing and saying, I'm going to do this. I don't think they really necessarily got it until I had a few big moments like doing the Tonight Show was a moment where they were like, oh, okay, this is you are doing something with this. When I did the Grand Old Opry for the first time, I brought my dad uh, and I think I brought my dad and his buddy and his buddy had always wanted to go to the opera. Mm-hmm. So for him to go to the opera and then see his friend, see his son mm-hmm. there, I yeah. think was huge. And I yeah. think they were like, oh, OK, now you've made it. Now it's happening. And, I, you know, the first time I, I got a Netflix half hour, I told my dad I was going to be on Netflix. He goes, oh, great. And then he goes, what's Netflix again? <laughs> right. You know, like he was pumped, but he didn't quite know what I was doing. Right. Like when Manny Pacquiao came in here, I got a picture with him, and I sent that to my mom. That's when she knew. Oh, that's when she knew Manny had arrived. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you you think about that sort of the downtrodden goals. Uh, Yes, the number one goal for me and all the parents and all my friends' parents is that you leave and don't ask for shit. That's right. it. Mm. That's considered a victory. You're if, self-sustaining. If you can be out by 18 and a half, 19, and never ask for either money or to be bailed out of something, possibly, you know, a drunk tank or something, or pay for rehab or some version of that. If you can just not ask for anything after you leave, then your kid is a success, or at least they're off the hook. Yeah, and with my dad in particular, it's like, even don't ask for advice. He's like, I'll give it to you, but you don't ask for it, kind of thing. He don't say those words, but every every time I ask my dad, I go, hey, can you... You got any, help me find a car. He goes, I don't know where to get a car. You know what I mean? And it's like, he knows where to get a car, but he's not helpful about it. But, it, but you know, but if I get a car, it's almost like, oh, I could have, you should have let me know. It helped you, helped you yeah. get a car. You lose either way. Yeah. Do, uh, do you have kids? I have two kids. 
Uh, I have a two and a half year old kid and a uh, about an eight month old son. Oh, congrats. And I love kids. It's the it's the best thing I ever did in my life. I never thought I would have kids. I'm 41. I was never planning on having kids. Uh, and then during COVID, I had my daughter, and uh, it's the best thing I've ever done. I love it. I know. I, uh, I'm half there with you on that. I love my kids. But I, the, the problem is when you have kids, then you marvel at how your parents acted toward you, the sort of eh, laissez-faire, which they probably don't use that term in Alabama that often. I don't hear that a lot, no. <laughs> not a lot <laughs> this, at the pesticide aisle of I don't want to tell you this is the first time I've heard it, but I've not heard it a lot of times. And I'm not even a, sure what it means. A general hands-off approach to <laughs> yeah, sort of yeah. raising your kids. Yeah. Come see, come saw. I think. Oh, and, yeah. And I'm saying then you you get kids and you start thinking about, well, look, number one, you know, my kid's born. They got to have a college account. You got to start a savings account sure. for college. That's the first, like, first thing the Corollas would have never done is gone. We got to start setting some money aside for X, Y, or Z. The next thing you know is like discussions about what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You know, like, what do you want to be? You know, what do you think you're good at? Like, all these discussions about your potential, what you're le- – discussions with other adults, by the way, who – these aren't their kids, and you're discussing the potential of your kid or their kid with you. I just don't feel like any of that ever happened. Yeah, I hear people talk about now they'll go back home with their families and they have arguments about politics at Thanksgiving. And I think, I wish me and my family had those kind of deep talks. And yes. Like, we're not talking about, we talk about, the, the closest we come to a political debate is college football discussions, mm, you know, mm-hmm. Auburn, Alabama, this and that. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, but you're right, though. I mean, I, I feel like I used to, like when I was a kid, I played in the woods nonstop. I would I lived in a trailer park, and I had woods on either side of me, and we would just be gone the whole day. Mm-hmm. I would, I, you know, I don't know where I'll be when my kids get 10 years old or whatever, but I feel like right now I would never let my kids disappear into the woods that long. I just feel like I'm too aware of the darkness of the world now. Yeah, well, your dad told you not to fall down an old mine, which <laughs> right, I, I right. saw in the stand-up <laughs> special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I I agree. All the stuff we did, we would never let our kids do. On the other hand, we're alive, and we got something from the experience, you know? And so now you have to kind of wonder where, how much of that exploring on your own, being in the woods, avoiding mine shafts, how much of that created i mean look it turned into five minutes of your stand-up you yeah. know so yeah. there is some residual from that and we can't really measure how it affected you in the positive you know so i guess if you come out the other side and you got all your limbs and you didn't get abducted by a pedophile and you didn't fall down a, an old well then maybe you're the better for it well yeah, I mean, I, I think about that sort of stuff all the time. There's a lot of things that I think about what my parents did where I'm like, I'll be, you know, not mad at them, but I'll think, oh, I wish you had, you know, done this or this or this. But I think, you know, had they encouraged me to take my ACTs or my SATs and pushed me to go to college, would I be doing what I'm doing right now? And I like what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. You well, know? you have... You know, the good news is for all those who had regular jobs for extended periods of time is they have a nice base to compare what they're doing now against. And, you know, you think about people that don't have something to contrast it to, you know. So it's like if you, you know, if you if you were alive with cell phones, you know, after the invention of cell phones, you know, and then we get used to having our cell phones and then you go driving, talking on your cell phone with your Bluetooth or whatever's connected to your car, or whatever it is through the 18 speakers and you're having a conversation. And then at some point you go up through the Canyon and it gets a little, it breaks up a little bit, gets a little choppy. And then you go, Jesus Christ, what's going on? Can't somebody yeah. figure this out? This is the worst day of my life. But if you gave that device to your grandfather and told him he could communicate with his friend with this magical device, you know, 40 years ago, his mind would be blown, right? Oh, so yeah. it, it is a kind of compare in a, in a contrast. It's 
otherwise, everything's just relative and you, you never really get anything out of it. So having these baseline of bad jobs makes it very easy. Like I just got back from Naples and we they sold out the first four shows. So they added a fifth, a matinee, you know, and I'd have people at the place I was at. They'd be like, oh, man, thanks for I know it's a long day and if the you know and I go listen I stand here for an hour tell jokes I go back in I eat for free then I come back out oh yeah do it again that's not work it's not work I know but it's a long day I go it's just it isn't work not not where I'm from right it's not if I was J Lo's kid then maybe it would be work yeah well yeah I mean uh, I mean I would do some very long days pushing pallets of fertilizer around a Lowe's <laughs> for ten bucks an hour and at that time I would say to myself this is the most money you've ever made just keep pushing the fertilizer ten bucks an hour. because before my highest paid job was seven bucks an hour so I'm like I, I'll gladly push this for ten bucks an hour and now so yeah you're right I mean uh, and if, if you're thinking about the same club in Naples, the food is great there. So yeah, yeah you, you do uh, off the hook. Yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, you do a, a show there, and then you go eat great food. Uh, you're in Florida. Uh, yeah, it's like we travel all the time. I get I get frustrated about traveling. I'm like I get mad at the airline for this and that, and then I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I'm irritated, and it's okay to be irritated. But I could be irritated uh you know delivering pizzas like i used to do you know so you can handle a pallet jack huh yeah oh yeah i mean i'm working it i used to we're going to home depot after this yeah oh yeah pallet jack i mean i was all about a pallet jack (laughs) (laughs) i knew you were i still pride myself on being able to move like the luggage cart uh at the hotel last night i when i went to park it back Mm -hmm. i moved it in such a way that didn't it it went in perfect it didn't require me to back it up and readjust i nailed it on the you're falling back on your pallet jack yeah no one saw no one i'm getting some applause now but, saw. Uh, yeah, yes, exactly. Because the pallet jack, if you're steering it from behind, it's like, you know, you turn left, it goes right, you know, or vice versa. It's, it's, it's a dance. Oh, it's yeah. It's a delicate dance. I was, I could really nail it back then. <laughs> I, I bet I still got it, but. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I could, yeah, it's so, I mean. Yeah, Listen, I, mean, I, I can tell you this. You're talking to a guy who installed a custom closet in the wrong house. Oh, no. And the reason I could do that, even though I didn't know it at the time, is because I had tool bags, a hat, a tape measure hanging out, toolbox, and I walked with purpose. Yes. And when I knocked on the door, the woman who answered the door, I walked right past her to the master bedroom, started tearing the closet out. I have this theory that if you put on the right hat, and a vest, tool bags, and you show up any place, take over. So you, there's no doubt you and I can go over to the Home Depot and just take over an aisle. I, absolutely. I, I've been told that if you're carrying a ladder, you can get into any place that you want to get into. People that's just true. move out of your way. It yep. is everything is about confidence. I used to walk I, I, when I, that month I was in New York City. I love looking at like the architecture of these buildings, and I would just wander into like business buildings and just walk around and look. It would take people a minute <laughs> to be like, "This guy's going cool anywhere." Yeah, you Did you have a ladder? No, I was just, it was just me. I was oh, just, if you took a ladder, you'd own that place. I know. But I find, too, if you turn on the southern accent, you can you can go, oh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't know I couldn't be in mm-hmm. here. You know, and people, they're not mad at you. They just think, oh, this guy's lost. <laughs> the, um, He's lost. Yeah, you're I'll right. The ladder, time. the ladders, it's a more precise way. It, it's it, Your batting average is higher with a ladder, but a ladder's heavy. Yeah. The hat and the and the uh, tape measure clipped onto the belt buckle is a lower profile, less precise, but lighter way to travel. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you know, and if your shirt's tucked in and, you know, your jeans are dirty, I mean, people think, all right, this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. confidence is huge. I mean, I, I, I've stuck in a ton of places just uh, looking like you're supposed to be there or you do the cell phone. Mm. You pretend you're, you're walking quickly with a cell phone and you're like I can't talk right now. I gotta go. Like, oh, or or you ask uh, based on my experience, like, oh, um, I was talking to to Matt or Mike. 
Those yeah. Are the teenagers. There's always a Matt or a Mike that works. Yes. There. Who's in a, in some supervising position yeah. that'll get you in. All right. Why don't we take a break? We'll get into some uh, more news with uh, Dusty Slay, and we'll do that right after this. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in the store, do it online to receive points and get rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, four, even five times bonus points on select purchases. Receive bonus points on select items throughout the store like wiper blades, antifreeze, coolant, parts cleaner, motor oil, and more. Those bonus points can help get you to your next rewards even faster. You'll receive a $5 reward for every 150 O reward points to use on your next in-store or online purchase. Members can check points and rewards online anytime. If you're already an O rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add an email address or mobile phone number. Get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, signing up is easy, quick, and simple. Just do it online at O'ReillyAuto.com or in store at O'Reilly Auto Parts. And now, Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, St. Petersburg, Florida. A 33-year-old man was arrested after refusing to pay for the $250 tattoo he received. The tattoo was the Waffle House logo. Definitely not a Jew. Dusty Slays hanging with us, working man, very funny and likable and clean stand-up special available now on Netflix. And uh, if you want tickets to one of his many dates, go to DustySlay.com. And, uh, He's we'll, on a 35-city tour. Yeah, it's a lot tour. of cities. We'll do, uh, we'll do some news. Dusty will hang out and put his own brand of comedy on these stories. Um, all right, well, I'll pick a different one then because this one's sad. Uh, let's go. So there's an Italian province that's uh, turning to DNA tests mm. to tackle the scourge of dog poop on the streets. I heard about this one. Yeah, so uh, so you have to get your dog to uh, register mm-hmm. with through a DNA registration, and then once they get, they get everybody, they'll have uh, they'll have the abandoned poop genetically tested, and the owners will face fines of about. Fifty-four to five hundred forty American dollars. I just I did the the math there for you. Mm-hmm. Any Wait, owner, fifty-five. To, fifty-four to five hundred forty. It's a pretty big gap. Yeah, I know. Fifty so, to five hundred euros. So, like a Chihuahua would be fifty-five. I mean, and yeah, a Great I wonder Dane if it's based be, on the ounces. Maybe depending on how loose it is. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 You got to factor that in as well. Right. Seems like you could just hire someone to clean it up for the amount of money <laughs> to do this. Right. This is a pretty big project. I agree. I hope they do. I hope the idea with stuff like this is it just prevents people from letting their dog do this. Like it just wakes people up. You know, I've always you go to a lot of airports, right? Oh, yeah. And I see a lot of dogs in airports now. Oh, so many. And I've seen dog poo and dog diarrhea in airports. And I see these dogs on a 20-foot leash, like, out in front of the woman. It's, it's clearly not a seeing-eye dog. It's clearly, <laughs> right. it's not a service dog. You gotta get way ahead to way clear ahead the area. To clear, yeah. yeah, I can't get my stick out that far, <laughs> get the dog out on the leash. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, it's just people flying with their pets oh, at, yeah. this, at this point. And so I had this idea that we need to randomly select some of these dogs, and just some airport official needs to pull dog out and go like, do you have all the certifications and notes and things for this dog? And they wouldn't. And then we'd say, okay, the dog's coming with us. And we take the dog out and we take it to where they test the impellers and the propellers on the jet 
airplanes by firing a frozen chicken at it. And we put the dog in the air cannon and we put it up on all the TV sets, all the CNNs, normally showing <laughs> CNN at the bar and ever the gift shop is all the dog. And we take the owner who's crying hysterically next to this <laughs> and we load him into an air cannon and we spool up that Rolls Royce jet and we just fire it right into it. Pink mist comes out the back, and then we look at everyone else and goes, anyone else want to fucking try to bring their goddamn dog in this airport? Go ahead. Give it a try. But this right. could be an issue. I actually felt the same way. You've said everything I've been thinking but was afraid to say. <laughs> Here's something else you're afraid to say. <laughs> I think they do this with the, uh, you know, they have the gay games, like the gay Olympics. I don't know if it's a big deal anymore. I never heard of the gay games? That. Don't try to pretend you're straight. I've never been or attended the gay games. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, why would, in a world where everyone has their own thing, why wouldn't there be gay I'm games? I'm not surprised there is. I just haven't, I've, I haven't heard of it. Never heard of the gay games, Dawson. I've heard of them. They're fairly serious, What are right? some of the events? Like, they're actually actual events. Man mounting. <laughs> <laughs> pole vault, but not as you know it. <laughs> totally different take on the pole vault. No, um, I don't know. Look up the gay games. I don't know. The scene of the next one is, and whatever. They're, they're also known as the Spectacular Olympics. Really? I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. No, so, okay. So they have a thing. They have the... Uh, 24 hours of lemons car race where they take beaters and they race them for 24 hours. I know this one. You know this one. Yeah. All right. So how so they go each car you have you can't pay more than $500 for your car, right? So you go, okay, those are the rules. Well, how do you know I didn't spend $5,000 on my car and just bring it over to the mm -hmm. 24 hours of lemons beat up on all you guys that are following the rules, right? Yeah, my buddy sold me this McLaren for four hundred fifty dollars. That's it's, right. I still that's, qualify. That's right. Well, you want to know how they make sure that doesn't happen? They they take the nicest car and they hand it to Robosaurus and he crushes it. <laughs> and now they go. Anyone else want to try bringing something oh. good here? So that's what I'm saying with the dog with the gay games. We don't know if these guys are all gay. There that's be, true. There could be some heterosexual ringers in oh. there. That is true. And how how would you find out? I'll tell you how. I line them all up at the ceremony. I just walk the line. At some point, I stop randomly. I pull it out and I go, start <laughs> sucking, bro. <laughs> and that eliminates the straight guys trying to infiltrate. Mm -hmm. So we do it with the dog. We do it with the gay games. Yeah. I mean, it would work. I think that, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, I mean, maybe you get, a, you know, you get a, a particularly hot guy that you're like, nobody could resist. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh-huh. To be the... You know, ambassador. Yeah, yeah. That way you could rule out being like, "Well, I just wasn't attracted to." Oh, mm -hmm. sure, you know? sure. You know, you you could you could do that, Dusty. That could I, be. A... I don't know. I've not. You know, I don't get a lot of that. But uh, who knows? You know, Day I'm not young. saying I'm unattractive. I feel no. good about the way I look, but I don't think that I'm the kind of guy that no man could resist. Mm -hmm. I don't know, about halfway into that special, maybe I was having mm. a drink. I felt yeah. I felt some tingling in my loins. Well, I've always had better luck with women if they saw me do comedy. Oh, yeah. I would say that. <laughs> this is being, uh, having Versus coffee. the pesticide aisle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Versus yeah. the fertilizer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was, Even though you I could know. handle that pallet I like just Mario and Dreddy. I was stronger. I was stronger then. Oh, yeah. Pushing pallets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but is I there was, a gay game still going on? Yeah, the last one was in 2023 in Hong Kong and oh. Guadalajara. I'm going to say it's still going on. All right. Future yeah, one is set for Valencia in 2026. Wow. How do they? It actually is called the Gay Games. Uh, Valencia, Spain, by the way. Yeah, I was not going to say. Not California. Uh, North LA County. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. The Gay Games. So we got to keep it real and we got to keep these straight guys from infiltrating. And this is how we do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You don't want to taint the gay games. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to taint. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyway, so if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you refuse to DNA profile your dog, you actually get sh uh, face a fine up to a thousand euros. So, so you got a dog really registration. Do yeah. Yeah. You got to no. do it. Yeah, I think, I think the there. problem the problem is post COVID. There's going to be a lot of people going, "Oh, so I'm going to register my dog with your dog bank, and then some other cooked up shit's going to 
come out of Wuhan, and then you're going to insist my dog get vaccinated because he's on the, the DNA bank list. Like, people don't want their shit on these databases anymore because— be off the grid. Yeah. They, they want, everyone wants to get off the grid, so maybe there's that complaint. Um, all right, so uh, we, we mentioned in the intro, and you kind of mentioned it uh, last segment too, Toby Keith— Died of a uh, stomach cancer. Mm. Uh, peacefully, died peacefully, surrounded by his family, according to a statement posted on the country singer's website. "Quote: He fought his fight with grace and courage." He announced his cancer diagnosis in 2022. How old was uh, he? Wow, I didn't think it was that. 62. Mm. I thought it was l- much longer ago, but oh, maybe really? Not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was, he was uh, known for his overt patriotism. On mm-hmm. post 9 11 songs like Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue mm-hmm. and boisterous barroom tunes like I Love This Bar. Yeah. And Great song. Red Solo Cup. Well, he should be known for I Want to Talk About Me. Cause that's that's a my, great song, that's too. That's a great song, because that song's funny and he yodels. And I should just says like, Proud City of Toby Keith. I'll tell you who loved Toby Keith was Terry Bradshaw. The quarterback. Yeah. Big Toby Keith guy. I don't know why, but he had a. He had like a daytime show called Home Team or something in like 1998 or something. I used to do all those shows. Was oh, he in the Toby Keith fan club, you think? I don't know. He he, he told me uh, Terry Bradshaw. All I remember is, is uh, he, I went and did a show, you know, do Donnie and Marie's show and all these, every, every show. And um, was hanging, well, there, see, there's Terry Bradshaw oh. and Toby Keith. Um, I just was talking to him like before the show, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm out in Oklahoma, you know, near my friend Toby Keith." And I was like, "I'm from North Hollywood. That does. Yeah. It's 1999. I he, have no." no he looks so on. happy in this picture. I'll tell you that. But he I, does. Brad loved some. Uh, let, uh, ooh, is is Terry Bradshaw going to work it into the Super Bowl kind of roundtable pregame? You know, maybe a little lyric, little, little Easter egg like lyric. my old friend Toby Keith used to say about defenses. Yeah, you, you know what I mean, like I a little, so. little something in there. Is Bradshaw on CBS? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew. He'll be somewhere saying something about the game, yeah. and it might he'll he'll mm-hmm. do a little Toby. He in should there. do it. Yeah, a little tribute. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, speaking of music, so the Vegas Sphere. That mm-hmm. U two is playing mm-hmm. during March, so they announced their next acts. Next up, uh, you're, uh, fish. Wrong? It's fish. Yeah. Oh. What's wrong? Ah, just yeah. That'd I'm, be the place to go to watch. I'm not a fish there. guy either. The Dead's gonna do uh, then, a stretch of shows there too. I mean, they're yeah, really they're pushing next. the. They're like basically just saying this is for hallucinogenics. Right. Dead companies go that, for next. it. Right. Yeah. It's either going to implode or. Yeah, I went to a fish concert. It's, <laughs> I'm not into fish either. I just got into the dead recently, and I was like, I, I never liked them growing up. I always liked country, uh, but I started listening to them recently, and I'm like, oh, this is really good. Maybe I was wrong about fish, too. So I started listening to them, and I was like, nah, I was right about this. <laughs> yeah, you were right about yeah, fish. I was right about this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to square it. So many people are huge huge fans uh i get that sometimes they play uh, the who's quadrophenia or something like that i okay i think there's a fundamental disconnect like where, where you're going like we're seeing a fish concert and you go oh good i hope they play another group's album that's kind of a weird oh, thought yeah. to have going in and the reason the fish concert i went to wasn't any good is because they didn't play a bunch of other music that's oh, good yeah but that's kind of a weird conceit, like when everyone tries to defend the Beastie Boys. And they go, in the, on the third album, they played their own instruments. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> You're saying a band played an instrument? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell that to Blues Traveler. They'll be impressed. Yeah, you know, uh, Grateful Dead has a real grungy, like a grittiness to it that I feel like uh, Fish doesn't have. It feels like too happy and poppy and mm. I don't what, know. What do you like in the Grateful Dead department? Uh, well, I listened to this al- uh, live album, and I w- and I and I'm no expert on this. Without a net? Uh, no, this was like I fr- Europe '72. <laughs> I don't know. I would have to pull up my my Spotify to see, but With, it's uh, without a net should be a fish album. 
But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without but a gill net. It, uh, it was just so great. And I was like, oh, it just was a live album. And I was like, wow, this is really great. And I don't even know that I know any of the songs off, but I just kept listening to it. And I was like, you know, I was getting high a lot at the time, but I was like, this is great. And uh, I wish I had. I, I, I was not prepared to talk about Grateful Dead. <laughs> I'm sorry what? I brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another it's probably you're up seventy two. Go oh, on. Yeah. In, in other news, so uh, the world's first AI brothel just opened in Berlin. It's called a cyber brothel. Mm-hmm. And so what you do is you get a private suite. You book it for a few hours. Or you can even go overnight. You get one of those headsets, mm. and you get a sex doll. I want to and, talk about registering some DNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a cleanup crew that's going to want some registration over there. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, what's the uh, benefit to going to that brothel? I guess, I guess you know, if you're married, your wife doesn't let you have that kind of stuff at home, I guess. Yeah, maybe. That it, would be the benefit to go into another place. It counts as not, yeah, not cheating. I don't know. I just feel I, like if you're going to do it, that sort of stuff, why not have it at your your own place? It counts as cheating for women because women would rather somebody have a physical encounter like once on the road than a longer term sort of emotional relationship oh, with somebody. I just saw I just saw a study that it was the other way around that actually like girls prefer the physical relationship whereas guys uh, they get gir- women are uh, more affected if it's a physical relationship, and guys are more affected if it's an emotional. Oh, attachment. really? Yeah. When did that study? I literally just saw it today. I don't know. I feel like I, that, that feels backwards Snopes? to me. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been Snopes. You read that on Snopes? The yeah. fact checker check that. Uh, well, I, I for anecdotal, anecdotally, hi, and historically, if you said to a woman, "Would you rather your?" husband go out on the road some business and have an encounter a one-time encounter physical encounter with a with another woman or be be back at home texting and having kind of a long-term sort of emotional emotional psychological sort of relationship with with somebody which would you prefer and i think i thought the answer was that they prefer the physical, the one-time physical, than the longer-term mm. emotional relationship. But, and then for guys, it, it was sort of the opposite. Yeah, but, that makes sense. But you just read this article. Yeah. I, I think sometimes they do. They, they put out these studies just yeah. to do they, they give you the opposite information. No, they, they do that. Yeah, like, know, studies, they're, yeah, they're just like. Rolling they, Stone puts Tiny Tim in the top 100 guitars of the <laughs> world. And you go, yeah. Tiny fucking Tim, what are we talking about? And now next thing you know, everyone's yelling about it. And Rolling Actually, Stone, Joni Mitchell played the Grammys. R- right. Rolling Stone is laughing because we got. We got Joni Mitchell ahead of Pete Townsend in the guitar. I, I think they throw stuff out to get us to bite. Yeah, that could be going yeah. On. all those all those lists are meant to be controversial, so we get upset about but it. But maybe right? that's what you read could too, because be. that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't exist. Yeah, I can't say that my wife would prefer either, and I don't think I would either. I think my <laughs> wife would ruin my life over either of those. But <laughs> um, but she's got to choose one, Dusty. But. but but I think if I were spot? if I were to choose, I would. I think I would rather. I don't know. It feels like I would rather it be the texting thing than a physical thing with that's my wife. A, but that's how guys are wired. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I agree. So would, you go to the brothel and put the goggles on. Put the goggles on. You could you could sext with these AI bots. You could. Uh, yeah. Just uh, it's all AI. So they don't have actual sex workers. I guess from the standpoint, what I'm thinking is like if, if you're going to be doing that, why even go to a place? You know, it's like it's be more sanitary if you just knew it was your own thing. If yeah. it's not going to be a real person, why do you have to go to a spot? I agree. And then how's tipping work? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you got to yeah. tip. Yeah. Somebody's getting a tip. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I will say this. You can do it in your own home. But your wife is going to ask why you're installing a deadbolt in the bedroom door. (laughs) And that may be what we call a tell. When you you start putting up the uh, foam acoustic padding to catch the sound (laughs) and putting a door sweep on the bedroom door and putting a deadbolt in there, you know, from the hardware aisle. Yes. Uh, If that, if that's, if you got to get out a two and three eighths hole saw and then you go get an inch and a quarter paddle bit. 
They know, and a, and you got to do the strike blade as well. They'll know something's afoot in that room. Yeah, and if you say it's just a podcast, she's going to want to hear it eventually. That's right. Well, mm-hmm. let's see. Let's see what you've been doing. Let's see mm-hmm. what you've produced. Yeah, I'm just doing my podcast with my <laughs> dick out. You know, <laughs> all the greats. All right. All right. Um, so Tucker Carlson mm-hmm. go, is going to Moscow. He's there now, actually. I think mm-hmm. to interview Putin. Mm. A lot of people freaked out about this. Everyone freaks out every time he does something because all he does is there There used to be rules, and the rules were, were here's how we do it. Here's the story. What is the story? Well, the story could be COVID, or the story could be Ukraine, or the story could be Hunter Biden's laptop. Good. Here's what everyone says about the story, and it's all going to be the same thing. And then he goes... And there's, you know, Joe Rogan and RFK Jr. and guys like that. They go, nah, we're going to tell a different story. And then everyone freaks out and goes, what are you guys talking about? Don't listen to this guy. Um, They created guys like Tucker Carlson, and he's going to go off and make a kajillion dollars. I think I'll see him when I go to West Palm, maybe do a show somewhere in March. I think I got that on the calendar. But uh, he's going to upset the establishment is what he's going to do. If he hasn't already, yeah. And they don't they don't like it. They want you to get your news from Anderson Cooper, who is the establishment who either lies or goes along with with well, everything. He's also being uh, a lot of places are saying that he is an outspoken defender of Putin, so they don't like they're wondering why he gets to I mean obviously they know why well, he gets to interview him, but should he be the one Well, okay. So here's here's the thing. Um, outspoken, out, outspoken defenders are the only people that get to interview people. Uh, now, uh, Gavin Newsom came in here 10 years ago, right? I remember. Have you ever seen Gavin Newsom in here before? No. After? He's not come back. All right, because I'm not an outspoken defender of Gavin Newsom. When's the last time you heard Kamala Harris sit down and get asked a real question by a real journalist or, or Joe Biden or, or anybody from either side? They won't agree to interviews if you've been slinging the shit about them for numbers of years. You won't. But yeah, Tucker, I don't want to talk to someone that's been that's been doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if, if I, I were like, yeah, they were like, uh, Adam before. Carolla hates you. Do you want to go on the show? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm scared to do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Exactly. Yeah. People, people don't want to go. Now, now people in the past would go into unfriendly environments and sit down. We used, that used to be a thing and they did it all the time. They do not do that anymore. They only go to friendly environments and sit down. But then you have to go. Does Tucker Carlson have integrity? Will he push back and will he ask questions? And I think the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. So that's number one. Number two, without trying to go full tinfoil hat, because I always say I'm tinfoil yarmulke, I'm not full hat, but yeah, it's starting that. to grow a little bit on there. All right. I may be, I may be tinfoil helmet. I'm Ooh. like tinfoil cowboy hat. <laughs> what do we really know about Vladimir Putin? You know, like, what do we really know? It's all speculation. All right. So we know, you know, Biden calls it the gas goes up four bucks a gallon. That's Putin's Putin. pike hike, price hike, right? Then remember, remember once upon a time where all Biden was going to do was sanction all the oligarchs? <laughs> we're just going to take all their bank accounts and this war is going to end in a week because we're going to take all the money out of Russia. And we're going to take all their yachts. And our, remember that one? Right. What happened to that one? And then what happened to the oligarch he didn't sanction? Oh, that guy had a relationship with Hunter Biden. Oh. And what did CNN get right about COVID? And what about the 51 experts in security that said Hunter Biden's laptop had all the earmarks of Russian collusion? And what about Hillary Clinton with the Steele dossier in Russia, Russia, Russia? Like, what do we really know, honestly know about Putin and who's been telling us what to know about Putin, right? Yeah. And I'm not defending Putin, and I assume he's a bad guy, but we're only getting the information from the people who have been lying about everything, including Russian collusion, for years now. So should we take Hillary Clinton's word for who Putin is? No. 
that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. so, what if Russia is a real party? I yeah. mean, it could be a real party over there. Look you know at the I mean? Kremlin. It looks like a Knott's yeah. Berry farm. Yeah, and then they're like, you don't want to go to Russia. It's bad over there. And we're like missing out this oh, whole time. Yeah. I, even, I even think that about North Korea sometimes, right? You only hear bad things about North Korea, but we don't know what's going on over there. The Kremlin looks like Candy Cane Lane. Yeah. Yeah, it looks it, awesome. It could be gumdrops and cotton candy. That could be the real Willy Wonka over there. I mean, <laughs> you see the pictures. Yeah. I, Look at our look at the Pentagon's this big block, you know, sitting right. in the middle of nowhere. That's not hospitable. Yeah, Kremlin's it looks edible. fun. Yeah, yeah, the Kremlin looks edible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's probably they're probably playing that Small World song from Disney. Yeah, I agree with you. It's like we only know what we're being told about Russia. We don't. It's not like we're all taking vacations over there. Well, you have this. You have the is mo- more and more. Is- maybe I just was at a gathering with. Uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr., but talk about the military industrial complex. Like, we need to be at war all the time, right? And then you take some part of a region that we just have no idea. By the way, Ukraine is totally corrupt. Corrupt. Oh, have been corrupt and been corrupt. And remember, Joe Biden got their DA fired over there for being corrupt. So, and they have graft and corruption, right? And then Russia does what Russia does, and then we all start wearing Ukraine pins at the Golden Globes and the Oscars, and we start talking about defending democracy. (laughs) Ukraine is not, they're up to a lot of shady, shitty stuff in terms of a, they're not a great example of a democracy. And then uh, they they blow up the Nord Stream pipeline. Remember the pipeline from Germany? And yeah, yeah, that gets blown up. And then they were like, Russia blew it up. And and Tucker Carl's like, why would Russia blow up their own Turns out not so much anymore. By the way, any follow-up to who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? It was a big story. I forgot about it. (laughs) It was a big story when Russia did it. But maybe Russia didn't do it. Now it looks like Russia didn't do it. But where's the follow-up on CNN about who blew up the pipeline? You guys can't keep doing this and expect regular people to have clear thoughts about Ukraine or Putin or Russia or Hunter Biden's laptop, you can't, COVID, you can't, Wuhan lab, you can't keep gaslighting everybody and then expect us to just hop in line when the next story comes down the pike. Now, was there even a pipeline? Oh. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like, I, on that same sense, as uh, I don't know. I mean, as far as what information I get. I haven't they, seen it. They just say they blew it up, and I'm like, oh, that's bad, but uh, was it even there? Dawson can look, but... They blew it up. Everyone accused Russia of blowing it up. Then Tucker Carlson said, why would Russia blow up their own pipeline? And then everyone called him a Putin sympathizer, which is all part of the game, Mm. right? And a Putin apologist and a Putin puppet. Stupid. Here's what Russia needs to do for PR. Uh, And and then I think it was about two years later, it kind of slipped out that man, maybe the U.S. and the U.K. actually did the blowing up or, yeah. or some other entity. But again, Rachel Maddow is not going to tell us about that. No. She told us the original part, I saw that not part. the other part. <laughs> yeah. Where's their story, Dawson? A couple of months ago. There was ago. a story a couple of months ago that it, it was legitimately tied to, I thought it was, that it was tied to Ukraine in some way, but Russia was exonerated. Um, of course, Wikipedia right, but they told us the that. Russians hacked yes, our. Yes, they did. Hold on, Go they ahead. told us they hacked our election. Yes, they told us that Putin did all the all you know cast all the votes, and then they told us they blew up the North Stream. They tell us a lot of stuff about Russia. It caused all this cultural chaos right. within right. the country. Forever right. with Russia. I mean, right. even like way back to Rocky Four. I mean, we yeah. Been, yeah. it's always the Russians. They're always just, the bad guy. They're never the good and maybe guys. they are. I don't know. But listen, but, uh, if you're a multi kajillion dollar industry like the military industrial complex, and then you just go, listen, we just have to talk about Russia every few months, and we'll have all the money we need for the rest of our lives for everything. And by the way, the money we send to Ukraine, that's not they don't they don't have accounting for it. They don't know how much. And then we're all sitting there going, We're not gonna pass this border bill unless we have enough for Ukraine. You know what I mean? It's like when all of a sudden we're all <laughs> Huge cheerleaders for Ukraine, like and Hunter Biden's doing business in Ukraine on the Burisma Energy Board. Like 
this is feel feels fishy. That's all. That's I all get I'm it. saying. So yeah. that, guys. I I would like <laughs> I I would like uh, Tucker Carlson to go sit down with Putin and then we'll decide. Yeah. How the answers yeah. went. But I'm, I'm curious to no, see. Let's what talk to the guy. See what he's up to. Yeah. Yeah. What was that story, Dawson? It was it was printed was out in a publication. Well, that's the other thing too is. Nord Stream pipeline gets blown up by the Russians. You can find out five thousand of those stories, and then you look for one that says it wasn't blown up by the Russians. Like, oh, there's nuts not on the Here's internet. Here's what Russia needs to do: they need to host the gay games. Oh, they need to have the gay games in Russia. That's right. Mm-hmm. All will be forgiven. You know when and Putin interview, it's like he always speaks Russian, and then they translate. And I and I watch anything like that, and I go, "Is he really saying that?" Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like we know. I have no idea. I feel that way with sign language. Yeah, I don't know what that person's <laughs> up to. Yeah, I feel like I could have done that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, found something. Yeah, I got a story here that says senior I- Ukrainian official. Coordinated Norm Nord Stream pipeline attack. The report alleges that Roman Shervinsky and a six person team orchestrated the explosion. It's the coordinator of the explosions that ruptured Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 natural gas pipeline, the Washington Post reported, citing Ukrainian officials and European forces sources, and in con- 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 conjunction with German uh, periodical, uh, that's their newspaper, uh, was basically. Roman Trevisky, former commander of one of the Ukrainian special forces units, was the coordinator of the Nord Stream operation and managed a six-person team that carried out the devastating multi-billion dollar infrastructure attack in September 2022, according to the report. All right. So um, maybe that's true. Maybe the Russian story is true. But uh, there's no reporting and there's no follow-up. On an event that was massive. It was all over the news when Putin Russia did, did it. it. When Russia did it. So uh. I'm just saying, people that want Tucker to shut up or me not to watch the interview or Dusty not to watch the interview, sorry, you you used up all your goodwill by lying for the last five years. So that's where we're at. Now, it doesn't mean it's true or untrue or someone's good or someone's bad. It just means you people have lost your vote to tell me where I can get my information because you guys have been lying about various things for years now. And no corrections, by the way. There's no corrections. And we moved on. Putin blew up his own pipeline, and we're turning the page. All right. Uh, Dusty, let me uh, give some info out on you. Working man, very funny. Stand up on Netflix. DustySlay.com for live dates. All yeah, over the place. And a whole new hour, too. So if you if you watch the special and then want to come see me live, it's a whole new hour. Uh, all very funny. Yeah. The, the new stuff is funny. very funny. I, it has to be. It came from your head. That's true. Mm. I'm running out of jobs, though. I gotta. I may have to get some <laughs> new jobs. We're heading to that Home work, Depot. Yeah, keep this you're, working. You're going to commandeer Pallet Jack. I'm going to get on it like it's Laverne and Shirley. And oh, you're yeah. going to push me all the way through the Home Depot. Yeah, you can even ride. Uh, the fun th- home, uh, A pallet jack is almost like a little skateboard. You can run in the middle and then jump on the sides and then steer yourself. It's a lot of fun. It's they don't a, like you doing that in there. But. It's the poor man's Roman ride. The oh, Roman yeah. ride from SeaWorld was a guy stood on top of two dolphins for like three seconds with his legs spread. Oh, yeah. That's what you do with the pallet jack, oh, the poor yeah. man's Roman ride. I like that. I'll call it the Roman ride. Why not? And I trust you behind the wheel. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> I mean, pallet jacks are what I do. Yeah. That's why you're going to be piloting what, this I'm thing. I'm even pretty good with like a hand truck. I can really Ooh. work those too, but mm. a pallet jack is mine. How are you with a refrigerator dolly? Uh, I don't know. I never really did those. Mm. I know what you mean, but I never really moved refrigerators. How about a furniture dolly? I, I think that's about the same as a hand truck, right? Yeah, I think I can work that. Okay, we'll hit them all. Yeah, yeah. All right, Dusty. Right, <laughs> it's walking distance, so we can. All right. All right, we'll just we'll 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 get over there together. Let's work it. All right. Uh, Go to amcrawl.com for all my live shows coming up at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club in Vegas, February 22nd. And you can check out uh, Eric's stand-up special as well. I don't understand. Until next time, it's Adam for Eric and Dusty and Chris saying mahalo. Mahalo.